members of the Right Honourable the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday the 26th of February 2019. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge their continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. And we also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who may be present today. The Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List of one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Will all present stand in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country at sea, on land and in the air? Thank you. Please sit down. Members, item five on tonight's agenda. Uh, uh, there are no apologies or leave of absence this evening. Item six, uh, looking for the confirmation of the minutes from the tw uh, 12th of February 2019. If I could have Councillor move, please. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor second. Uh, thanks to Councillor Hyde. Uh, are there any corrections to the minutes? I mean, uh, there have been no corrections. If I could ask you to vote in favour, please show of hands. Thank you, those against. That is carried. Deputations, item seven. We have one deputation has been granted this evening uh, to speak. That is by Ms. Kelly Henderson. Uh, Ms. Henderson, if you are here, if you could come forward. That doesn't appear as if Ms. Henderson has joined us tonight. Item eight. Oh, is she there? Right. Okay. Ms. Henderson, you have three items I believe you wish to address us tonight and uh, you have five minutes and wish to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I actually requested to make four deputations. So the, um, for the deputation that's refused, could I ask that that be dealt with first? Because for a refused deputation, it has to be put to the members. Uh, my understanding is that the fourth item, which was a confidential settlement deed, is disallowed on the basis of not relating to a council matter in public interest. Um, I'm not aware of um, 
that being able to override a, a deed that councils entered into as a legal matter? CEO. Three, or most entirely within the rights of the Lord Mayor to disallow. And so that's disallow rather than refuse. So it doesn't get to go to a vote of the members? No, it doesn't, uh, Ms Henderson. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, on the other three matters, I'll try and speak to them in order. Um, firstly, uh, elected members, the reason I'm not in the chamber at the commencement of the meeting is because I am dedicated to upholding the rights of Indigenous people in accordance with the UNESCO Convention on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Those rights include the right to be recognised and the authentic traditional custodians of the Adelaide Plains are not the Guiana peoples. For the council to continue recognition of someone other than the authentic traditional custodians of the land that we are on is cultural genocide. It is eradicating the original occupants of this land from our history and denying them their right to recognition. If you have regard to Houchin's document on the uh, stone implements of the Adelaide tribe, he perhaps gives the best explanation of why we do not have an Aboriginal name for the original occupants of this area. Uh, they are several and many, as Angus, as reported to George Fife Angus by his informers in the 1830s and 1840s, and as Angus reported to the Select Committee of the British Parliament. The uh, Punkara, or the land occupation of the Adelaide Plains by Indigenous people, was more like farmsteading because of the high biodiversity and the, the far greater resources than in the outback regions. There were many groups and tribes between Crystal Brook and Cape Jarvis, but none of the northern tribes had any right to occupancy or to claim traditional custodianship of the Adelaide Plains. And that was proven by the wars that they had and the battles that they fought, which are recorded uh, by the surveyors who were the first to have um, uh, interaction with the Aboriginal people on official European settlement, that is, following the whalers who didn't keep official records. As the later First Premier of South Australia recorded, the people who he knew at Rapid Bay, who had nursed his baby after it was born and saved the surveyors from being drowned or lost in the bush and therefore from death, um, the Ramanura tribe and the people of Rapid Bay fought off the northern invaders. Unfortunately, the governor's gifting of blankets on the Queen's birthday allowed that non-consensual occupation of the Adelaide Parklands by other tribes, such as the Northern Tribe and the Big River Tribe. But they were not the traditional custodians of this land. Um, and they've, uh, the northern tribes have later um, obtained the name Gauna thanks to the work of Tyndale, the entomologist, the bug catcher Tyndale, and the South Australian Museum, who created for themselves, in, in my words, an anthropological playground with what they called an instinct, extinct tribe so that they could play with burial sites and the writing of papers. And so I'd ask that this council recognise the authentic original traditional custodians of the Adelaide Plains by amending the acknowledgement to Aboriginal people rather than specifying the non-traditional Ghana, um, which are not supported by any historical record. Thank you. Um, the next item I think is the um, reports of the committee and the Parklands Authority. And I'd just like to direct the elected members' attention to page 32, um, paragraph five of the committee report. And this is in regard to the Rhyme Park trees, the honey locust, two honey locusts on East Terrace, south of Regents, uh, Rundles Road. 
Um, it claims that the trees were removed due to their poor condition related to the termite infestation and natural decline due to age. So these trees have been destroyed and what is being sought now from the administration is your retrospective approval for that destruction of the citizens' trees under Section 54A of the Development Act. But read on, please. Paragraph 5 says, once the condition was combined with activation of, the, of this space associated with events, the risks associated in retraining the trees was determined to be unacceptable. So these trees were killed to make this an event space, and that should not be given retrospective approval. Ms Henderson, Thank um, you. I did actually start the clock when you started on the, 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 first, the second item. So. Um, uh, unfortunately, you have had your time. Yeah. Could I just say on the bikeways, please, that um, open. I support Councillor Moran's statement about there needing to be um, the bikeway to not be on Frinders Franklin. That's a lose lose option. And Councillor Donovan's motion that it be open consultation okay. because people who thank, live in the city you. and cycle have not thank been you, consulted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, members. Item eight, there are no petitions this evening. It takes us to item nine. Um, item 9.1, which are the recommendations of committee from the 19th of February. Um, I will seek a motion for each of the recommendations in the report. So recommendation one, if I could have a, a councillor move and second, please. Councillor Martin and a seconder. Uh, councillor Sims, councillor Martin, did you wish to speak? To the, councillor Sims. Uh, did any other member wish to speak to the motion? If not, Councillor Martin to sum up. Thank you, councillors. If I can put it to the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Recommendation two, which is regulated tree removal in Rymal Park. If I could have a mover, please. Uh, Councillor Kerra and a seconder, thank you. Councillor Sims. Councillor Kerra, did you wish to speak to the item? No, Lord Mayor. Councillor Sims. Did any other member wish to speak to the motion? If not, Councillor Kerra to sum up. Thank you, and to the vote, thank you. For a show of hands, those in favour? Thank you, those against, that is carried. Uh, recommendation three, the Adelaide Central Market extinguishment of easement and grant consent as Lassie Guja Street car park. If I could have a mover, please. Uh, Councillor Canole, if I could have a seconder. Councillor Ho. Excuse me, um, sorry, not from the, there is no calling out from the gallery, thank you. Um, sorry, Councillor Canole, did you stick? Madam, if you do not refrain from calling out from the public gallery, I will actually cease. It's not a problem matter for the council's agenda. It should be an investigation. Councillor, uh, sorry. Council members, I'm actually going to adjourn for five minutes. To a, if you do not stop, Ms. Henderson, I will actually ask you please to leave the chamber. Thank you. Councillor Canole, did you wish to speak to the matter? No, uh, Councillor Ho? Okay. Uh, members, did anyone wish to speak to the matter? If not, Councillor Canole, would you like to sum up? Sum up. Thank you. Uh, if I could ask for the vote, thank you. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Item four is a recommendation on the Rymal Park kiosk. Councillor Martin, do I have a second? Oh. I want to move uh, a uh, variation, if I may. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, I, just a slight uh, amendment that uh, Council approves the administration entering into a new expression of interest process to determine the future leasing of Rymal Park kiosk and two as it is. If I could have a second, please. Councillor Kerr, would you like to speak to the motion, uh, the amendment? No, no. Councillor Martin. Thank you, I will, yeah. Look, I, I uh, propose this amendment um, uh, because what is proposed is a a uh, closed expression of interest uh, program to determine who and under what circumstances uh, uh, will operate the uh, the Rymal Park kiosk. 
Now, there was an expression of interest program about a year ago, and um, it was, uh, as I think I've mentioned to one or two councillors, a fairly controversial process for some of the participants. But nevertheless, it was a process that uh, delivered uh, somebody to operate the kiosk. Um, that uh, party has now withdrawn, and it is proposed that we invite three of the seven parties who participated originally to participate in a closed expression of interest, and that we invite one party who was not part of any part of that previous expression of interest to also participate. Now, um, if I were one of the three original participants in the tender process or the expression of interest process that's not been invited, um, I'd be pretty cross. I'd be saying, well, how come the other three have been invited and I haven't? And if I were one of the three who've been invited, I'd also be wanting to know, well, how come this new person, this additional party who was not interested at the time has now been invited to compete against me? Um, and if I was someone who wasn't around a year ago and uh, suddenly has developed an interest in this particular location and this particular lease, I'd be saying, well, hang on a minute, um, why am I not included also? Why don't I get the chance to participate? So um, it's not essentially open, it is closed, and it is open to people to say it's not especially fair. Um, what I think we need is a fair and open expression of interest program, a new one. And I know, uh, look, some people will say, oh, you will go through this and it'll just be those three and one other. But that, that is not the point. It is about the process. And this council does have a responsibility to ensure that we have open, transparent processes. Um, apart from that, this, this park, this location is now more important than it was a year ago because in the intervening period we've now decided it will be the location for a new indigenous uh, memorial site which is under negotiation i think that's in open council um, and since then we've determined that the area will be master planned and it is to be the location for the quentin kernahan uh, um, park which was in the public council papers published last week page 60 for anyone who missed it um, so circumstances have changed enormously. This place is going to operate next to a couple of fairly significant memorials and I think it probably needs a relook, a rethink and a chance for all parties to participate. It, it is transparent, it's open and that's exactly what sh should be fostered uh, by this city uh, and I would ask members to support that. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Carra, did you wish to speak to the motion? Thank you. Uh, councillors, did any other councillors wish to speak to the alternate motion? Count, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, just a question of uh, administration, just can respond to why they chose to take that path, just so it's on public record. Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. As was discussed at committee last week, uh, it was decided that given the short time frame between now and when the original EOI was undertaken, that it was reasonable to undertake a closed further expression. Having said that, um, since the conversation at committee, I've asked, I was talked with the director about was there any barrier to going to a full and open process? There really is no barrier. It's just a matter of judgment. Um, and at the end of the day, there's no right or wrong. If it's the will of council, it's quite easily accommodated. So after CEO, if you don't mind, is there a budgetary impact as a result of a reopen EOI or no? Um, through you, Lord Mayor, look, it would be minimal if there is. It's more to do with advertising, but I don't think it would be material. Councillors, would anybody else like to speak to the alternate motion? No? Um, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Martin. Summed up. Summed up. Uh, Councillors, if I can ask you both on the amendment. Those in favour? Thank you. Those against? That is carried. Thank you. That takes us to recommendation number five, which is the Disability Access and Inclusion Plan 2019 to 2022. If I could have a mover. Thank you, Councillor Moran, and a seconder, uh, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Hyde. 
Any other members wish to speak to the recommendation, to the motion? Thank you. If not, Councillor Moran, to some other? Thank you. If I could ask for your vote, please. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Recommendation six is the Safer City Policy Review and Action Plan. If I could have a member, thank you, Councillor Kerra, to uh, move the motion and a seconder. Councillor Ho. Councillor Kerra, did you wish to speak to it? I, I do, Lord Mayor. Just, just simply uh, and briefly to state that, um, uh, for the record, uh, at, as a consequence of uh, the uh, discussion in the committee, um, as a consequence of the ensuing media, there was a substantial amount of media uh, on the grounds on, along the uh, topic of pill testing. Uh, I'd like to state for the record my opposition uh, to council being involved in pill testing. Um, and I'd like to state that uh, I'd like to make it very clear that those discussions in committee and that request, um, in my view, ought not to be seen and ought not to be interpreted uh, by the media as the council giving any kind of imprimatur to either pill testing or to a narrative around the idea that pill testing will be legitimised by this council. Thanks. Councillor Ho, did you wish to speak to the motion? Did any other councillor wish to speak? No? That being Councillor Kerry, would you like to sum up? Summed up. Thank you. If I could ask for a vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, recommendation seven is the infrastructure asset management policy. If I could have a member please move the motion. Uh, sorry, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor and a seconder, Councillor Moran. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it? Right. Councillor Moran? No, Any other members wish to speak to the matter? No, if not, I'll ask for the, oh, sorry, ask the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Sure. Thank you, and to the vote, thanks. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, the final recommendation from the committee is number eight, the Strategic Plan and Integrated Business Plan Reporting. If I could have a mover, please. Councillor Martin and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to the motion? Councillor Hyde? Yeah. Members? If not, Councillor Martin? Stop Thank you. If I could have a vote, please. Those in favour? Thank you, those against, that is carried. <coughs> Members, that takes us to item 9.2, which is the advice of APLA, uh, sorry, the uh, Adelaide Parklands Authority. Just find. Uh, okay, so, uh, which was distributed separately. If I could actually please have a mover. Thank you, Councillor Moran, and a seconder. Councillor Sims. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to the motion? No, uh, Councillor Sims, would any other member like to speak to the motion? If not, Councillor Moran to sum up. Thank you. If I could ask for the vote, please. Those in favour? Those against? Councillor Martin, thank you. That is carried. Um, 9.3. Uh, there are two recommendations um, from the um, audit committee. Excuse me, one second. <coughs> Recommendation one is the report of the audit committee from the 22nd of February. If I could have a councillor, thank you, Councillor Martin, and a seconder. A seconder, members. Thank you, Councillor Kerra. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to the motion? Reserve my right. Thank you, Councillor Kerra. Thank you. Any other members wish to speak to the recommendation? If not, back to you, Councillor Martin. Summed up. Summed up. To the vote. Thank you, members. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. And recommendation two from the Audit Committee was the 2018-2019 end of year financial reporting process and proposed timetable. If I could have a mover, please. Thank you, Councillor Martin. And a seconder? Councillor Donovan. Councillor Martin, did you actually wish to speak to the matter? No, Councillor Donovan. No. Any other members wish to speak? If not, I'll ask for the vote. If I, those in favour, those against, that is carried. So I might just move that bottom as I come. 
Thank you. Uh, that takes us to 9.4 with a recommendation of the Strategic Planning and Development Policy Committee. We have two recommendations. No, I haven't. Uh, the first recommendation is, is a planning reform update, if I could actually have a mover. Uh, oh, thank you. Councillor Moran, seconded by Councillor Knoll. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to it? No, thank you. Councillor Knoll? Members? If not, we'll go to Councillor Moran to sum up. Thank you. And to the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. And the second recommendation is the planning, development and infrastructure regulations. If I could have a mover, please. Councillor Martin, uh, seconded by Councillor Sims. Uh, Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to the motion? Thank you, Councillor Sims. Okay. Uh, would any other member like to speak to the recommendation? If not, Councillor Martin to sum up. Thank you, members. To the vote? Those in favour? Those against? Thank you. <clears throat> that takes us swiftly to item 10 on the agenda, which is the uh, presiding member's report. So uh, members, I, I have uh, this report, which I'll just uh, speak to now, and then I have one item which I will add to the business in confidence tonight, um, a little bit later on. So we'll have an 18.1.3. Um, so, one of the joys of living in our city as one of the most successful multicultural communities is the many events and celebrations that take place throughout our year. And in the recent uh, weeks, many of us have been celebrating the Lunar New Year with our local Chinese, Korean and Vietnamese communities. And it's been a very great pleasure to attend a number of events to celebrate with them. And I can now say, oh, now I've forgotten it. Gong Si Fa Chai. Did I do that right? close. Um, Council once again uh, proudly sponsored the Lunar New Year um, in for the Guja Street Party organised by Chinatown South Australia as well as the footpo uh, footpath artwork which was unveiled by the Deputy Lord Mayor Sam Abiyad along with the Governor Hugh Van Lee AC and the South Australian Senators Simon Birmingham and Penny, Penny Wong. So um, it's a great celebration. I wish uh, our New Year's went for that long. Um, it was fantastic to see so many people out and about. During this term, um, of course, I have a strong focus on assisting the local businesses to grow and prosper. And I recently met with an inbound US delegation of investors and business leaders from Silicon Valley um, that have specific interest in South Australia's future and the industries such as space, cyber security, defence and the internet of things technology. I had further meetings with the South Australian Chief Entrepreneur, Jim Wally, and uh, to discuss the economic opportunities emerging from the US delegation visit. I also attended the AmCham SA Business Luncheon, which had a focus on entrepreneurship and the future industries of South Australia and the delegation attended as well. I recently met with South Australia's Small Business Commissioner, John Chapman, where we had a positive discussion about the ways Council can improve communication with our local businesses prior to large infrastructure projects, which we all know can be disruptive to trade. Last week, I travelled to Canberra with Lord Mayor of Hobart, Anna Reynolds, in the capacity as Triple CLM representatives. There we met with members of the federal government and the opposition to discuss the importance of uh, investment in all Australian cities, not just the East Coast, um, as well as meeting with the ACT Chief Minister Andrew Barr in his capacity as immediate um, past chair of the Triple CLM. There are significant opportunities for the local government sector to work collaboratively as a sector with other levels of government to manage the cost and drive efficiencies. So it was very pleasing to have such a significant turnout for the recent local government roundtable hosted by the Premier and Minister Stephen Knoll, um, which was held here at the Adelaide Town Hall. I think there were 43 mayors that actually attended. There will be future opportunities for Council to engage in the reform process throughout the year. And following many years of advocacy from our council and previous council and the community, I was very pleased that the government uh, committed $3 million in funding this week for a replacement cityscape park, uh, which will go into the Gladys Elphick Nanunga uh, Park, Park 25. Um, that is a fantastic result for both us and the city um, and, uh, and it was very welcomed that they have delivered on that promise. 
uh, after so many years. And lastly, uh, at the City of Adelaide today, once again received an Australian, uh, achieved, sorry, an Australian first, which was the laying of the very first 100% recycled road on Chapman Street in the city's southwest in partnership with Downer. Uh, thank you to Councillor Dr Donovan for attending. And I also want to commend former Councillor uh, Sandy Wilkinson, who actually put forward the original motion to investigate recycling road options. Um, in, in addition to the demonstration, um, other alternative recycling surfacing products uh, have been used on Little Sturt Street and Little Gilbert Street. And that was a mix of um, using, they use, I'll give you numbers, fantastic. They recycled 63,158 plastic bags, as well as 2,353 glass bottles and expired toner cartridges more than, uh, sorry, of more than 2,880 toner cartridges and that was absolutely significant. All of these materials were destined for landfill had they not been recycled and if you go and have a look at the streets you can't see any difference whatsoever um, and it is fantastic that we are uh, you know doing this in our city. The one that we did today it's fantastic being an Australian first and I do congratulate Downer who partnered with the City of Adelaide um, and invested quite significantly in developing their recycling plant. So when they, we took the asphalt off Gilbert Street, that was put in a mix with recycled oil and that has produced the asphalt which has gone down, gone down on the street. And it's pretty amazing that we're actually able to do that. Very innovative of Downer and a fantastic thing for, for us as a council to be leading the way. That's the end of my report. If I could have uh, someone move that that report be accepted. Thank you, Councillor Hyde, second by Councillor Abraham Zadu. Um, any discussion? <laughs> if not, if I can uh, ask you to vote, thanks. Those in favour, those against, that is carried. <coughs> Councillor's reports, item 11.1, .1, reports from council members. Could I have a councillor please move? to accept the report, Councillor Martin and a seconder. Uh, Councillor Sims. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak at all? Do any members wish to speak to the report? No, if not, I'll ask Councillor Martin to someone. Thank you. Uh, if we can um, please vote on that, those in favour. Thank you, those against, that is carried. So we go to item 12. Um, I have lost, there we go. Uh, the first item is 12.1, single use plastics and container deposit scheme submission. Uh, Councillor Sims, as a mover, if I could have a seconder. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I wish to move a, a variation to the motion that was circulated. Would you like me to read it out? It's for our chamber. I move that the council notes the submissions prepared by the administration in response to the government's discussion papers on single-use plastic products and the container deposit scheme shown in attachment A and attachment B to item 12.1 on the agenda for the meeting of council. Authorises the CEO to alter the submissions to reflect council's support for the state government's leadership in investigating the reduction of single-use plastics and the continuation and potential expansion of the container deposit scheme in South Australia. Notice that feedback on the government's discussion papers must be received by the 1st of March, that is this Friday. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Did you wish to speak to them? Uh, yes, just briefly, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I do want to commend um, administration for uh, their work in pulling together this submission and doing so within a, a fairly short time frame. Um, when I read through the submission, I, I did know that um, it, it didn't recognise uh, council's support for what the government are trying to do in a direct way, and that is um, take action on single-use plastics. It does offer some uh, constructive feedback on things that could be taken into account, but um, I felt that the motion, uh, that the submission could be strengthened by, from the outset, welcoming uh, the work that's being done. And really, this is just giving the, the CEO um, the capacity to make some minor changes that would reflect that intent. Thank you. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to him? Um, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I echo that. I think the, uh, the report is excellent and it's a much better response, I think, than uh, just the government approach of tackling single-use plastics because what it says here is that we need to uh, adopt um, uh, compostable materials 
broadly as a means of attacking single-use plastic uh, uh, use and uh, the issues associated with them. It's just one takeaway solution. I think that's quite simple. I don't have any opposition uh, to what's being proposed here, and certainly if the CDS scheme is applied to single-use plastics, that would be a step forward. But I do want to congratulate the administration on one thing, which is including businesses in recycling organics and by providing facilities for officers to recycle. And I hope that that will lead to our provision of not only green bins, but yellow and red bins as well for all businesses. Perhaps this is the start of it. Um, and uh, uh, well done to the administration. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Would anybody else like to speak to the alternate motion before you, Councillor Donovan? Just briefly, likewise, I'd like to um, congratulate the administration on this excellent report. And I would hope that we can see these recommendations aligned with the report that we are looking for in terms of improved waste management across the city. So I think this has already done a lot of that great work, which is excellent. And we can come to look at how those two areas can be married in the report that I know is due back in council shortly. So thank you very much to administration. Excellent work. Thank you. If there are no other members wish to speak to that, I'll go back to Councillor Sims to sum up. Thank you. Um, so if I could then ask for uh, members to vote on this. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, members, uh, item 12.2 is the uh, council representation on external boards. So first of all, I need um, a member to move the procedural motion, which is uh, the approval, and then we'll go to each of the nominations for each of the things. Thank you, Councillor Martin. And a seconder for the procedural. Uh, Councillor Knoll, Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to it? The no, <laughs> Councillor, no. Thank you. Go back to Councillor Martin. Would you like to sum up? Thank you. And if I could have all councillors, please. Those in favour? Those against? I'm not sure if you're against, Councillor Moran, or that was just a light hand. A light hand. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That's carried. Um, so we will start with. The, so I need a member and a proxy member uh, is required for the Adelaide Airport Consultative Committee. Um, I'll call for nominations for one council member to represent the city for a period of two years on the uh, Adelaide Airport Consultative Committee and then I'll call for a proxy. Uh, Councillor Sims, do you have a nomination? I wish to nominate Councillor Martin. Thank you. Councillor Martin, do you accept the nomination? I do. Councillor Hyde? I wish to nominate Councillor Kira. Councillor Kira. Yes, I accept. Do you accept? Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Uh, there being more than one nomination, I'm afraid we have to go to a ballot. Unless, unless members, you want one to be the member and one to be the proxy. We can do the ballot. It's easy. I'm happy to be proxy if Councillor Martin okay. wants to. If you're happy with proxy, Councillor Kerr, then um, I will ask. Uh, I will then seek a motion to confirm the selection and of appointing Councillor Martin as the member and Councillor Kerr as the proxy for a period of two years. If I could have a mover, Councillor Sims and a seconder, Deputy Lord Mayor. If I. <laughs> There being no debate, if I could now ask you to vote on the motion. Those in favour? Those against? That's carried. So that, that then means Councillor Martin and Councillor Kerrer, you're there for two years as member and proxy. Lovely.
Apologies, members. I just lost my place in my papers. So I, now I require uh, one director and one proxy director is required for the Adelaide Convention Bureau Board. So I'll call for nomination. This again is for a period of two years. Councillor Abraham Zede. Uh, Lord Mayor, I'd like to nominate Councillor Kuros as a director and uh, Councillor Ho as a deputy, um, a proxy. As a proxy. Thank you, Councillor Abraham Zede. Is Are there any other nominations? No, Councillor Kouros, do you accept the nomination? Councillor Ho, do you accept the nomination? There being no further nominations. Okay, thank you, sorry. If I could have a, um, so I now seek a motion to confirm the selection and appointment of Councillor Kouros uh, as the member and Councillor Ho as the proxy for a period of two years on the Adelaide Convention Board. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. And a seconder, Councillor Knoll. Uh, if I can ask for all those are in favour. Thank you, those against, that is carried. So, councillors, uh, I now call for nominations for a council member to represent the City of Adelaide for a period of two years on the Adelaide High School Governing Council. Councillor Sims? I nominate Councillor Amber Himsedan. Thank you, Councillor Amber Himsedan. Do, do you accept the nomination? Uh, are there any other nominations? If not, um, in, I'll seek a motion to confirm the selection and appoint Councillor Abra Himsida to represent the City of Adelaide for a period of two years on the Adelaide High School Governing Council. There's no further debate. I'll ask for you, for you to vote on the motion. Oh, sorry, I need a motion first. So, thank you, Councillor Sims. Uh, seconded by Councillor Hyde. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. It's just there. <laughs> Thank you. So for, um, in 1.4 we have the Adelaide Horse Trials Management Board Incorporated. I'm looking for a nomination for one council member for a period of two years to represent the City of Adelaide. Are there any nominations? Councillor Hyde. I nominate Councillor Kouros. Councillor Kouros, do you accept the nomination? Councillor Kouros, are there any other nominations? If not, in the absence, I'll seek a motion to confirm the selection and appoint Councillor Kouros to, to represent the City of Adelaide for a period of two years on the Adelaide Horse Trials Management Incorporated Board. Thank you, Councillor Sims, seconded by Councillor Hyde. If there's no further debate, I will now ask you to vote, show of hands, those in favour, those against, that is carried. One more. One. Uh, councillors, I call for a nomination for a council member to represent the City of Adelaide for a period of two years on the Australia Day Council of South Australia Board for the Australia Day Council of South Australia. Apologies. If I could have a nomination, please. Councillor Kerra. I nominate the uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Deputy Lord Mayor, do you accept the nomination? Are there any other nominations? Lord Mayor, I should just um, say that there's a perceived conflict of interest. Um, I um, am a uh, board member of the Australia Day Council, so I'll uh, stay in the room, but uh, I won't vote. Thank you, Councillor Uh are there any further nominations? There being no further nominations, I'll now seek a motion to confirm the appointment of the Deputy Lord Mayor uh, to represent the City of Adelaide for a period of two years on the Australia Day Council of South Australia. Councillor Hyde, seconded. Councillor Kerra, if there's no discussion, debate. If not, I'll ask for those in favour by a show of hands. Thank you. That, uh, and against, that is carried.
Councillors, a nomination for a council member to represent the City of Adelaide for a period of two years on the Regimental Council of the South Australian Regiment. Councillor Abrazin, sit down, sorry. Uh, can I nominate uh, Councillor Connell? Councillor Connell, do you accept the nomination? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes! Are there any other nominations? No. If not, uh, could I have a motion, please, to confirm the selection and appointment of Councillor Knoll to the represent the City of Adelaide for a period of two years on the Regimental Council of the South Australian Regiment? Councillor Abraham today, seconded by Councillor Hyde. Uh, there being any further debate? None. Those in favour, by show of hands. Those against. That is carried. Congratulations, Councillor Knoll. <laughs> Councillors, I'll now, I now call, I think this is the last one, uh, call for nominations for a council member to represent the City of Adelaide for a period of two years on the Royal Adelaide Hospital Auxiliary Executive Committee. Deputy Lord Mayor. I'd like to uh, nominate Councillor Hyde. Councillor Hyde. Um, are there any further nominations? No, Councillor Hyde, do you accept the nomination? You Yes. Um, Councillor Martin, did you wish to nominate? Oh, no, Lord Mayor. I just said that um, I'd given the executive an undertaking that if no one else nominated, I would, and I'm just delighted with the Councillor Martin. Thank you, and I appreciate that. That's my heartiest congratulations. <laughs> thank you, Councillor Martin, and thank you, Councillor Hyde, for accepting your nomination. So if I could now have a motion uh, to confirm the selection and appointment of Councillor Hyde to represent the City of Adelaide for a period of two years on the Royal Adelaide Hospital Auxiliary Executive Committee. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I need to move the Councillor Martin, second to Councillor Kouros. If there's no further debate, um, those in favour, by show of hands. Thank you, those against. That is carried. And the last one um, that we need a nomination of. Uh, at least one, so we have more than one, one nomination, for a council member for the minister's consideration to the appointment of the Study Adelaide Board for a period to be determined by the minister. Um, if I could have a nomination, Deputy Lord Mayor. I'd like to nominate Councillor Ho. Thank you. Councillor Ho, do you accept the nomination? Yes. Are there any other nominations? We can put forward one, more than one nomination should we wish. No? Um, if there's no further nominations, I'll seek a motion, please, to confirm the selection and appoint uh, Councillor Ho for the Minister's consideration for appointment to the Board of Study Adelaide for a period to be determined. Councillor Hyde, seconded by Councillor Knoll. Uh, there being no further debate, members. No, if I could have your uh, vote, please, by show of hands. Those in favour, those against. That is carried. Done. Now we go to item 12.3, which is the Joy Belouche Awards. Uh, could I have uh, the procedural uh, first of all, and then I'll seek a nomination if there are any nominations. If I could count, have a councillor move, thank you, Councillor Martin, and a seconder, uh, Councillor Donovan. Thank you. Does anyone to speak? Anyone wish to speak to the motion? Procedural? No, thank you. If not, can I, uh, Councillor Martin, if you can sum up, summed up. If there's no debate, if I could have a show of hands, those in favour, those against, that is carried. So now I'll call for not any nominations uh, for the Joy Belouche Awards. So I, Councillor Martin. I'd like to nominate Councillor Moran. Thank you. Councillor Moran, do you accept the nomination? Uh, I don't, um, and that's no disrespect to Joy Belouche, who I admired. Um, but as I've been nominated so many times and I have called for the City Council to leave the LGA, I think my chances are slim to none, so I won't waste their time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, Councillor Donovan? I'd like to nominate you, Lord Mayor, Sandy Bershaw. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Um, and uh, 
look, I, I'm actually not going to accept the nomination um, this round. Perhaps in an, another year or two, I may accept the nomination. Thank you very much um, for nominating me. If there are no other further nominations. Do we need to move that we are not nominating? No, we don't. We don't have to nominate. Um, but if there's no other nominations in the absence of that, uh, we don't have to do anything. We're good. Thank you. <clears throat> Item 12.4, which is the Local Government Ministerial Advisory Commission, uh, sorry, Committee. Uh, if I could have a councillor move and second to approve the nomination of either a council member or a member of staff. Uh, I'll, I'll do this one first and then I'll seek a nomination. So first as procedural, Deputy Lord Mayor, second to Councillor Donovan. Um, if I could have a vote, please those in favour. Those against, thank you, that's carried. I'll now seek a nomination that can be either a council member or a member of staff. Councillor Moran. I nominate Shanti Ditter. Thank you. I don't think Shanti actually gets her say in this, <laughs> Ms Ditter. Um, are there any other nominations? Uh, if not, um, if I could then have... So if I could have a, a motion for the nomination of Shanti Ditter, go forward for the Ministerial Advisory Committee. Thank you, Councillor Martin, seconded by uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, if I could ask you, please, if there's no further discussion, if we could go to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Thank you, Ms Ditter. Members, that takes us to item 13. There are no questions on notice this evening. Are there any questions without notice? Item number 14, thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, Lord Mayor, I, I lodged a series of questions for which there are brief answers, I'm assuming. Um, one, could the administration advise what it has done to ascertain if a breaking fault which has led to the ban of Lime scooters in certain parts of New Zealand is present in Lime scooters licensed by the Council to operate in the streets of Adelaide? I might ask the CEO to respond to that. Thank you, CEO. Thank you, Councillor Martin, for circulating that prior to the meeting. Uh, Beth Davidson Park has a response. Uh, thank you, Mark. Through you, Lord Mayor. Um, in response to your question, Councillor, Councillor Martin, we were contacted by Lyme um, this past Sunday, the 24th of February, about the incident, and we've since been assured by Lyme the technical software issue has been resolved for all e-scooters in Adelaide. Um, I would just add that I've just received an update of um, discussions with Lyme as recently as this afternoon between the City of Adelaide Dipti and Saipol, where there were further discussions about the potential for the fault and um, assurances from Lyme that um, they were very vigilant about that. And I've actually just requested that um, we request them to um, put some further communications to their users about that previous risk as well. Thank you. In, the, in which case, the second question is redundant. Third is, having observed Lyme scooters operating at speed, putting at risk pedestrians in Rundle Mall, what is being done to keep them out of the, uh, the shopping precinct? Through you, Lord Mayor. Um, the trial permit conditions ban e-scooters in the mall. So physically, we've put um, scooter ban stickers at every entrance to the mall, um, but more significantly, the geofence uh, or geofencing capacity of Lyme has geofenced the mall. So um, scooters should slow down once they enter that geofenced area. Um, they will also be reported back to Lyme because they're in that physical area. And so they can be prosecuted or whatever they do. Um, they can be penalised by Lyme. That, that's also an issue um, that we've raised with Lyme in our regular discussions with them. And look, just finally, having uh, as a, a district been overtaken by a Lyme scooter travelling at 25 kilometres an hour, mm. uh, at least that's what the rider claimed to be doing, mm. uh, what's being done to enforce the speed limit on these uh, scooters? 
As, as a part of the trial, we've requested that the scooters be set at a maximum of 15 kilometres per hour. So we've raised that with them as well. Um, it would be highly unlikely that uh, a scooter rider was actually going at 25 because it is a requirement and indeed they've signed to that that all scooters are set at 15. But we have made that report. Thank you. Thank you, councillors. Are there any other questions without notice? No, that takes us to, <coughs> excuse me, um, item 15, motions on notice. Uh, Councillor Moran. Dr. Lord Mayor, um, I move that the council investigate the reintroduction of the owner occupy rate rebate or something similar to encourage home ownership in Adelaide and North Adelaide. Uh, could I ask for a seconder? Thank you, Council. Oh. I'd like to make an amendment. I can, please. Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran, Councillor Moran, Councillor Moran, Councillor Moran, Councillor Moran, if there's a seconder for this motion, then we'll raise it as an amendment. So there's a seconder in Councillor Martin. So, so Councillor Moran may speak to the motion first and then you can raise your amendment afterwards. Uh, now, it shows how long I've been here when the Council uh, Administration Report doesn't even remember or mention the owner-occupier rate <laughs> rebate. Um, when it was brought in, which is before my time, it was because North Adelaide had dipped below 40% owner-occupier. Um, and it was just for North Adelaide, but it, and now it, obviously it's spread in, in later years. Um, it was a, pegged at about between 15 to 30 per cent um, on a sliding scale, the more, the, the, you know, to sort of, uh, as the house got more expensive, the rebate got a little bit less to, to be a bit more socially equitable. Um, a government, I can't remember which colour, um, out a bandit, um, I think it was about the time that the City of Adelaide Act was coming in and was seen as a, um, I don't know why they did, and then they said we couldn't bring it back. So what the council, the council did then was, as you see in the report, bring in a resident, residential owner-occupied grant eligibility. Um, that started off at $300, it was just across the board, and it wasn't actually restricted just to owner occupiers. If it was a primary residence or somebody, they got that too. Uh, gradually, the council over time reduced it down to a minuscule amount, and then finally it was just forgotten about. Um, when I was, we, as I was saying, when it was brought in, it was to, um, to counter a drop in the number of owner occupiers. Um, and it was also seen that people that uh, bought speculative houses gained rate um, relief, uh, the owners paid the rates, not the renter, and they gained relief by um, uh, other taxes like negative gearing and so forth. And that the poor old owner occupier was getting squeezed out of um, this suburb. Uh, that was when the owner occupier rate in North Adelaide was 40 and the rent was 60. We're now 30, 70. So we've dipped below the critical mass. Um, I'm sure the ward councils and other areas will probably see that in their areas as well. Now, I'm not sure um, whether the government would allow us to bring in a rate rebate, which is a lot better than a flat sum, really, um, because it's adjusted to the amount of rates you have and the expensiveness of your house, which is a bit like a means test. And it does help. Um, North Adelaide's not the wealthy uh, suburb that a lot of people has a lot of large houses, but it is has very um, a very eclectic and um, mixed group of people. I know my children at the moment are selling their house and trying to buy another one there. And what what you have to pay for in North Adelaide is to live near the city, is is significantly more. And our rates still are a factor. Now we gave uh, no rates to people that bought off a plan. Um, Councillor Abbott is, is working assiduously to make sure that the business get their, get rate relief, uh, such as outdoor dining, waiving of things. This is something we can look at to help the right, to, to try and help that balance come up again. Um, you might notice that I put in the motion uh, or something similar because I'm not sure whether we'll be able to, be able to convince them to reverse that. 
um, but it's a long time ago since they got rid of it. I'm probably sure, sure they've forgotten why. I can't remember why it was such a good idea. Um, but I'd like to us to investigate the situation again. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Martin. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I want to thank uh, Councillor Moran for uh, putting this back on the agenda. It is an important issue uh, for rate to pay. It's not only in North Adelaide, but the city. Uh, and uh, councillors will remember that last year, this council introduced a rate holiday for people buying off the plan, uh, and a rate holiday that is worth many thousands of dollars to those who took it up in, in some cases. Um, and a lot of residents said, well, you know, why not me? I'm living in the city, you need to look after me. I'm paying extraordinary rates. And so I think we need to look at some kind of incentive to encourage people to buy and live in the city as an ongoing uh, concession. We certainly do that for business, I support that for business, but this is specifically for residential ratepayers and preferably owner occupiers, although we love renters, we love renters, we love having people here in the city. Um, uh, certainly we are providing some relief by holding the rate in the dollar, but uh, it is possible for us to do more. And if this isn't successful, perhaps we could have a look at, as Unley Council has, looking at reducing the rate of the dollar rather than just holding it. And I can see the Director of Services feeling faint over here just on the right. But um, it is a possibility that we could reduce the rate of the dollar as our income goes up. And uh, thankfully, as members will know, uh, Director of Services has assured us that our revenue will increase by $4 million in the uh, coming financial year. $4 million, that's a great result. Um, and uh, this, this scheme, uh, when it was abolished, uh, it was costing council a mere quarter of a million dollars a year. Uh, and yet it was well received by ratepayers, and I believe it would be equally welcome if it or it by another name were reintroduced. Thank you. Councillors. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't mind just giving us a bit of a background on um, why the um, the scheme was abolished in the first place. I think there was something else to substitute uh, the plan. Do we have some background information on that at all? Uh, CEO. Steve, are you aware of that? Um, three, Lord Mayor, in relation to what um, uh, the council has outlined in relation to the scheme that wasn't included in the response from the administration, we are to have to come back to you on that. In relation to the residential owner occupier grant, that was an item that was um, part of the 2013 14 budget deliberations. It was identified that the resources previously allocated to that scheme would achieve more beneficial outcomes for all ratepayers as part of the new residential street development program. That's not the scheme I'm talking about. That's the scheme that's in response. I hope that answers your question. Um, Councillor Abraham Zeta, did you still wish to move an amendment? Yes, yes, Lord Mayor, I do. Um, I have an email at the throat. Nice to have emailed it to me, actually. Is there a seconder for the amendment? Councillor Hyde, Councillor Abraham Zidane. There's no disrespect to Councillor Moran. Um, well, not in comparison to what you just called me before, Councillor Moran. So, um, if anything, I should be I, sh I, I should be asking for an apology from you. You disrespect me, that's fine. I can put that aside, but don't disrespect other members in the chamber. Okay, so as I was saying, Councillor Moran, um, you're off to a good start. I think um, uh, such an initiative is, is good, but I think we can do better, uh, given that um, about 80% of, of our rates uh, come from businesses uh, and uh, they do pay a uh, more uh, a higher rate of, uh, of council rates than residential. Um, um, I think when it comes to this uh, rate debate, we should be on the on, on the front foot, and um, uh, really we should be uh, taking care of taking better care of uh, our uh, our businesses and our residents. Uh, Lord Mayor, uh, I, I, the reason why I bring this into the chamber is because I do come from a small business uh, background. I uh, worked for a, a small business in North Adelaide for a number of years. 
and I've seen what those small businesses go through. So any bit of incentive that we can provide for them uh, uh, will be uh, uh, will, will be great. Um, Excuse me, point of order. This is not. This is a residential owner of the park. So I'm, yes. So, so I'm, uh, I'm 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 extending that to, to businesses as well, residents and businesses. Lord Mayor, as I was saying, uh, uh, providing a rate incentive uh, for residents and uh, and businesses for all of, all of our rate payers, as a matter of fact, all of our rate payers. Uh, let us try and look after the businesses. Uh, they do bring investment into the city, and uh, uh, really, when you look at the businesses and the business uh, and the business owners, uh, that business is their pride and joy in their life. Thank you, Councillor Councillor Hyde. Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, all I'll say is that uh, I think this is a good idea. Um, I thank Councillor Moran for bringing it to the Chamber uh, and prompting this discussion. Uh, I do applaud the uh, inclusion of uh, businesses as well in the motion because I think we should just be assessing all of the tools that we may have in the kit. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Moran. Oh, Councillor Moran, sorry. Councillor Moran first. We have two sorts of rate payer. We have a business rate payer and we have a residential rate payer. If you give a residential rebate to businesses, you have basically just cut the rates. So why not at the election say, uh, we're gonna reduce the rates across the board by 10%, 20%. You don't have to go through this. It's just a rate cut. If a man can tell me another voter that I can't, haven't thought of, that isn't a... If a councillor, um, Abraham Adzada, can give me a name of another sort of rate payer that's not a business rate payer or a residential rate payer, I'd like to find out. So this, don't, don't be fooled by this. This is why I'm a little annoyed. Don't be fooled by this. This removes my um, owner-occupier rate. By giving it to everybody, you have given it to nobody. Um, this owner-occupier, as I explained, was to help owner-occupiers as against rental, because rental do not pay rates, the wealthy owners of the spe speculative properties get the rates, and we don't necessarily, they may not be wealthy, and I know Simon's huffing and puffing, but there are such things as negative gearing, and the speculative owner of a residential property gets other tax advantages. The owner, otherwise you wouldn't buy one. Uh, that's why you buy one, fair enough. But they don't need an owner-occupier rebate. The owner-occupier gets nothing. He only, he gets no tax relief at all. The businesses get tax relief, often the way they've set them up, if they're clever businessmen. Uh, they also get, um, as I said, the councillor is working on waiving parking, um, on-street parking. But the seminal point here, how cleverly it's been done, by giving it to everybody, you've given it to nobody. Thank you. Councillor Kerrin, and then Deputy Lord Mayor, and then Councillor Sims. Um, I'm just wondering whether, whether uh, Councillor Moran, Councillor Abrahamsaday, or any other councillors could perhaps um, just speak to a couple of aspects. Um, one is that there, there is a difference here. We're, we're talking originally about um, owner occupiers, as in people who live in the city. And I, I think the idea, and I, I, the the idea is that when you have home owners, uh, you have a greater uh, sort of um, emotional investment in the property you're in, and consequently you have a greater uh, incentive. And, and I think this is quite manifest. You have a greater incentive to. Um, uh, be a part of your community, contribute, uh, engage in civic, all that sort of stuff. And there, there, there is a clear uh, benefit in, in, in people who be, can become owner occupiers in any, any suburb. Um, we're talking about here businesses as well. And I think that that is also an understandable uh, sort of incentive to give. But is there a difference between, is there an arguable difference between uh, being a residential owner occupier on the one hand? being a business owner occupier. Um, if you're a business owner occupier, is it more of uh, sort of an equation that you make? Is it, more of a, is it more just of the economic calculus that you tend to make? Um, that's one thing I suppose uh, would help. I know it's a little bit amorphous, so I'm just putting it out there. The other thing is that the overall question of the extent to which we are subsidising, uh, we have uh, renters who are subsidising 
uh, owners. Um, that's something that that ought to be factored in. It's an economic um, it's an economic equation. My view. My view is that the first principle you should move from is that any distortion in the market, uh, unless it's justified by uh, a market failure, will end up uh, being a, a detrimental distortion. Um, that's just my, that's just, you know, sort of first principles. It's a very complex thing. Um, so I don't know, um, maybe the second aspect can be, can be actually put forward by administration in the report, but we are talking about a subsidy and let's not forget that, that, that aspect. <coughs> Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor, then Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I've just got a couple of remarks. Um, um, the one thing that I'm concerned about is the budgetary impact of it. Um, this is the one thing we can't tell, I'm, and I'm glad this part of the motion talks about bringing back a report that talks to potential budget impacts as part of the budget consideration for 2019 20. Because the one thing I don't have an answer for right now is I don't know how many owner occupiers we have for residential and also for business, and what is potential, uh, potentially the impact of that rate reduction, uh, be it deservedly for residents or owner-occupied businesses, if it applied to our budget in 2019-20. I know we're going through a serious budget process at the moment. We have some considerations to take into account. It's going to be a tough process by every measure we hear from, uh, from our administration as well. So I'm really interested to know, before we make any decisions, uh, how this will impact the budget. So will the report that will come to a workshop or committee or whatever it is indicate how many uh, potential rate payers are owner occupiers in the residential and the commercial space? Can we get that data? So it's just a question to administration. To the CEO. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Um, three, Lord Mayor. We, I'd have to work that through, to be honest, Council. I think that there's an element there where we would know some particularly residential owner occupiers yeah. more readily. Yeah. I'm not sure whether we could be, how definitive we could be in the business right. sector at this cool. point because of registration names and sure, such. Sure, sure. Because the important bit as well, if we can display that information in postcode or wards or whatever it is, just to get a bit of an understanding as a council. Because uh, I think that, that piece of work is really going to be interesting for us to measure the owner-occupier in 2019 versus what the owner-occupier was 10 years ago and what will be 10 years from now. So I think that piece of information around the investigation of owner-occupier is important because if we are trying to promote as a council owner-occupiers for the city, not just for residential but also for business, and if we want to use this as a carrot approach to incentivise people to buy property in the city, be it residential or commercial, there, then we might need to think of different ways of how we do this. Uh, not potentially through a rate, potential rate reduction, there might be other ways for us to uh, also assist. But look, the one thing that I need to know historically, it is correct, businesses do pay three times the rate of a dollar of that of a residential. Uh, and when you look at some of the residential aspects, there are people in the city that own six, seven, ten apartments, 20 apartments in the city that are on Airbnb that are renting them out. Those are not considered businesses. Although they are, they're negative gearing their apartments, they're running them as businesses. Um, and they are paying a rate, a residential rate in a dollar of just one, where a business, where potentially a snack bar, a small business in the city, is paying three times the rate of what a residential property owner is paying, although even they're using that property for investment. So I think even our rating model needs to shift and potentially how we'll be able to compensate for a reduction in the rate rebate for residential and for commercial uh, is by increasing other rateable services. So if we we're trying to look at residential, for example, if someone does own four or five or six properties in the city that are rented and generating the revenue, then potentially we can rate those differently as well. So look, I think this piece of work will be very important and um, I'd ask members to support it. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I'm afraid I can't support um, this amendment, and mainly for the reasons that uh, Councillor um, Abiad, Deputy Lord Mayor Abiad has um, identified. Uh, I just worry about the cost of um, something such as this. Um, you know, I, I think, with all due respect to Councillor Abrahimzada, we'd almost have to add a, a recipe for magic pudding into the motion if we're going to try and fund something like this, because if we're going to be giving a broad um, rebate to owner occupiers and to businesses, that's a pretty broad brush thing to do. Um, I have to say, I, I did have some concerns with uh, Councillor Moran's original motion, and um, I relayed these uh, to her previously, and I have the same concerns about. Councillor Abrahimzada's amendment. And that is, I think, when we are giving rebates such as this, we should be doing so on a, a needs basis um, and really um, applying uh, some form of means testing so that we're ensuring we're getting 
as the support to those who need it most. I think that's the point that um, the Deputy Lord Mayor was also making. You know, we do have uh, people in our city who um, certainly struggle to uh, pay rates um, and, <coughs> excuse me, being able to give them a rebate and some level of assistance is something I'm certainly open to. But I think a broad brush um, rebate such as this is maybe a bridge too far, particularly when um, we're facing some significant uh, demands on our budget. So I can't support this amendment. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Martin and then Councillor Donovan. Yeah, thank you, Lord Meg. Uh, could I begin by asking the administration a question? Is the rate in the dollar that's levied on businesses three times greater than that levied on uh, private homes? Here you go. We don't have that information at the moment. Well, look, I, I can tell you it's not. It's not. It's significantly less. It's merely a fraction of, of the of the rate in the dollar, and that's some of the economic gobbledygook that's been going on here tonight, muddying the waters. It is, with great respect to Councillor Abrahamson, it is a, a motion, uh, an amendment that just clouds it all. Well, what Councillor Moran has proposed is simple and straightforward. We are a city. We have population targets. We are trying to get somewhere near 27,000 people to move to the city in the next 12 months. We are more than 10% behind that, probably closer to 15. And we are aiming for a target of 40,000, which we have frankly no hope of meeting. We also have a collapsing apartment market in this city. More than half of the ones that were in the pipeline, the construction pipeline, have been uh, cancelled. And so Councillor Moran's proposal is simply about encouraging owner occupiers to buy in the city. It's completely consistent with our policy, whereas what has been proposed as, as an amendment is not, and much of it is just a nonsense. If businesses are paying rates, then they are receiving a tax deduction. Residential owners do not. And if somebody is operating an Airbnb, which is negatively geared, they are receiving a tax deduction. You can't get a negative geared property unless you're paying tax. So just ignore all of this voodoo gobbledygook economics. Voodoo gobbledygook economics, ignore it all. This is just a straightforward, simple initiative to encourage people to move to the city, to live here, to own properties. And, and as such, it is uh, consistent with everything that we do as a council. Um, I, I won't support the amendment because I recognise that a rebate to businesses just sabotages the other, which may or may not be the intention, but I won't support the amendment. I'll support the original. The original makes sense. It's about encourage, encouraging residents and city development, and as such, it's worthwhile. I can't tell you how, how fabulous it is to hear voodoo economics come back into the chamber, <laughs> Councillor Martin. Uh, Councillor Donovan. Just briefly, I'm wondering if we can, whichever version of this goes through the amended or the original, whether we can have a commitment from administration to look at the impact of a varied rate rebate, because I suspect the evidence from other cities would show there is minimal impact of a small rebate and there would actually need to be some quantum that would have the impact that we're aiming for. So can we have a commitment within the yep. report to look Fair. at evidence from other cities as to what is actually effective in achieving the aim that we're looking for? Yep, we'll take that on board. Thanks. Councillors, does anybody else wish to speak to the amendment? Councillor Pinal. Um, I just wanted to put a couple of words towards it. And I think uh, we need to be, uh, um, be mindful that the word is investigate. So it is, it is first in, uh, uh, collecting the information and it doesn't matter fundamentally if it's about residential purely or a business, but it is about just seeing and seeing the lie of the land and seeing what are the options that you have got. That's in the first instance. And secondly, I think if, if you're looking at the, uh, giving a rebate to owner occupiers, well, I mean, the objective of the city is to get more residents. 
and that means that our concern is getting people here to, uh, into the city by whatever you know, whether it be through apartments, through owning uh, you know property yourself. But you are limiting uh, again your view on who you are trying to assist to come into into the city. So it is much more. If we want more people in the city, then our question is how do we attract them and how do we make it easier for them? And I mean, this may be a, a way to um, you know to. A, for, by a nominal sum, considering that you know properties in the city are certainly not at the lower end of the spectrum, but uh, you know, but if that is going to be the, the driver of trying to get more people into the city, then I think that you know that by in the, the total equation, and it doesn't really won't, it won't really deliver that which you're intending, which is we should focus on you know getting people in the city and wanting to live in the city, and that takes it a bit more uh, deeply into how we're going to attract residents. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. If there's no further debate, I'll go back to Councillor Abraham today to sum, uh, to sum up. Uh, yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. And um, I would like to remind all members uh, of the wording. We are investigating. Uh, there is a report that is um, uh, that is yet to come back to this council. So uh, I do understand um, what uh, uh, Councillor Carroll was, was referring to. So I think uh, um, hopefully when that report comes back, we can uh, we can address those uh, those items. Um, in relation to the concerns that Councillor Sims and Councillor Martin have, um, again, let's wait for the report to come back and let's see what that says. I'm not uh, uh, I'm not advocating for us to go out there and uh, cut rates and give out, uh, like I said, our handouts. That's not what I'm advocating for. But uh, let's investigate it. And all I'm saying is what Councillor Moran has brought into the into the chamber is a good start. Let's try and go one step further and, uh, and apply to businesses too. Uh, and I urge, uh, I urge members for their support. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, councillors, I'll now ask for the vote. Those in favour, show of hands. Seven. Those against. That is carried. Councillors, the division has been called on the amendment. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Abraham today, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kerr, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Kuros, and Councillor Knoll. Um, so that now becomes a substantive motion. Does anyone else wish to speak to it as a substantive? If not, I'll ask Councillor Moran to sum up. Yes, I won't be voting for the substantive motion for the reason that this seems to be a common um, tactic in this council that when somebody puts something very simple, easy, and should be voted for easily, um, a member of the larger faction comes in and amends it in a slight way that seems very innocuous on the surface, uh, but actually knocks the kitty out of the ring and completely denudes the motion of its veracity. I spoke to the Lord Mayor earlier today about this sort of voting and she assured me that wasn't the case, but she talked to some people. And it's really disappointing that uh, some of us said that they would, would lower the rhetoric give the voting bloc a chance to prove that they thought independently. But having listened to what Franz said and what others said, I despair that, that that will ever be broken. This was a motion to investigate. Clearly, budget considerations would have been included in that. So number two is completely irrelevant. Um, as I said, there are only two sorts of ratepayers, so this would just be suggesting across the board a reduction of everybody's rates. It's ridiculous. I suspect that it was done to stamp the name of somebody else on this motion and to knock mine out of the kit, and I'm very, very annoyed. And Lord Mayor, I'm so disappointed because I really thought that maybe we could see a way through here, but this group is clearly going to vote together, whatever happens. Thank you. Thank you. If I can then ask for the vote on the substantive, those in favour, those against, that is carried. The second motion on notice I have from Councillor Kerr. Councillor Kerr. 
Okay, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, happy to speak to this one. Um, look, um, Lord Mayor. Sorry, Councillor Kerry, before you speak to oh, it, I do you need a seconder? I need a seconder, sorry. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Thank you. Now you may speak to it, Councillor Kerry. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Lord Mayor, um, when door knocking, when door knocking across the CBD, uh, there was one uh, request, concern, grievance that stood head and shoulders above all of the others uh, amongst the small business owners in the Adelaide CBD. That was uh, that was a request, concern, grievance around on street parking, and it was unanimous. <coughs> the, uh, the concern was that uh, there was not only um, well, the concern was that, uh, uh, to, to, to put in the words of small business owners, they would say, look, every time I look outside of my business and I see works done on the street, uh, every time there is a change to the street of some, some form, there's always less parking rather than more. Uh, this was the consistent uh, thing. And I, I went into this. I, I went and door not thinking that rates, rate relief would be number one. It wasn't. It was car parking by far and away. Um, this, I, I know that administration have put forward a uh, concern that they will not be able to get uh, this back to us in time. I would just point out that this motion is uh, essentially a, uh, it's a, it's almost a report about a report. Okay, so this is not a report requesting an in-depth audit of all this, the on-street parking uh, in the Adelaide CBD. This is a motion telling us what a, give us some idea of the metrics. How are you keeping track of on-street parking? Uh, and how would you go about uh, putting together a report? How would you go about reporting to us, back to us, on uh, what the picture is with the on-street parking? I don't think that this uh, should present that sort of time uh, problem to administration. Um, so, uh, look, let, let, let's be clear, the, the small businesses, are, the upshot, the outcome of this sort of review, this this, um, this 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 motion, at the end, we may only return a dozen parking spaces back, back to the CBD. I understand it is a central business district in a state of flux, but just remember, if you are a small business and you are in hospitality or you're in retail, one parking space out the front of your business can mean three, four, five, six, ten uh, customers per day. It, adds up, each individual space adds up. And let's not forget, there is another context to this. We are in a recession right now, and every single uh, piece of evidence, every serious pointer about the direction this economy is going to be, is going to head, is that there is far more likelihood of a serious decline in economic activity. This recession, in all likelihood, will get worse. That is the backdrop. Small businesses are the lifeblood of our city. I think this is a great opportunity, Lord Mayor, for a new council to send a message that we are listening. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Could I, uh, Councillor Hyde, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, just briefly. Um, I thank Councillor Kerr for bringing this motion to us. And he obviously spoke about the business aspect and he's a central ward councillor. Um, of course, I'm a south ward councillor um, and it is the biggest issue that comes up when you're door knocking. Um, of course, there are other consistent issues, some of them we're dealing with today, whether it's rate rebates or bike paths or what have you. But um, the availability of parking in the city uh, is the single most consistent issue. Um, for me, I'm a, I'm a driver in the city, I'm a, I'm a cyclist in the city, uh, I walk and I run throughout our city recently, I've become one who scoots throughout the city, um, and I do think this motion allows us to at least start laying the groundwork um, uh, in so far as getting the information and making it available to us so, so that we are able to assess the state of play overall. Obviously, there are many, many different ways that we get around the city, um, and we need to be, uh, we need to be allowing for uh, progress in, in, in all of those modes of transport. This, again, I'll, I'll use the same, is a tool in the kit in achieving that, and that's why I'm happy to support it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I, I can't support this. Um, I think this uh, query is redundant. We do already have uh, considerable on street parking in the city. Um, in fact, I don't see how we can find space to add in any more parking. 
Um, and you know, if we progress down this line of inquiry, I think we run the risk of trying to turn Adelaide into one giant car park. I mean, I don't know why we would be putting our energy into investigating this when technology is continuing to change. We've got changes happening in the way that transportation um, rolls out. There may well be autonomous vehicles coming on the market soon enough. Um, I note that Councillor Donovan has a, um, a motion coming down the line shortly that deals with uh, cycling infrastructure. And we know, of course, that when we continue to invest in active transport, then we reduce reliant on, uh, reliance on cars. That's good for the environment. It's good for health. Um, and it's good for local business. So, you know, I'm not um, in the camp of wanting us to go down this path. Um, and uh, I encourage other members to uh, vote against this motion also. Councillor Moran, sorry, I didn't see you. Yes, I won't be supporting this motion either. Um, we are constantly looking for and improving our on street um, parking. Layout, so it is on one hand unnecessary. Um, also, we run a third of the off street car parking stations, which really, apart from very short drop offs and, and deliveries and so forth, taxis, they're all the people that should be on the road the business people delivering, the taxis picking up people, etc. etc. And we're always looking for ways we can squeeze them in. Anybody else should be really, in my mind, parking in an off street car park. The, the cost is about the same um, and uh, we run even at busy times only at 75%. So it is cutting our financial throat to be encouraging people to be on the street. When our car parks are not full, we have more off street car parks than ev any other city in the Southern Hemisphere. So there is no dearth of car parks. I know when you door knock, people say car parking, car parking, car parking. That's ex exactly right. But that doesn't mean that it really is, the, is as bad a problem as one can expect. So I think to, uh, to try and squeeze any more out of our streets is a, is a futile exercise. And um, I think we should be encouraging people to park in our car parks. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ryan. Councillor Martin. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, I am uh, puzzled by this. I, uh, I confess by, uh, to having a local area traffic management and parking plan in North Adelaide underway and reporting. And I note that this is for the Adelaide Central Business District. But having read the administration's comments, uh, and noting all of the actions underway, including um, the Smart Move Interim Action Plan, which highlights parking actions, uh, and others, including, and we, we approved just two weeks ago, a uh, South Ward Local Area Traffic Management and Parking Plan. Well, everything is overlapping. And I just don't understand why we need another one on top of all of the others. Um, I, I might be inclined to support this if the other actions weren't there. But if we have those other initiatives <coughs> underway, then this simply cuts across all of them and duplicates much of the work. And uh, like Councillor Aviad, I don't like uh, work being duplicated at unnecessary costs. Good. Uh, any further debate before I go back to Councillor Carroll? Oh, sorry, Councillor Connell. Again, just a couple of comments, and it, it really comes down that uh, one of the major problems the city has as a, as a central business district is that uh, we're no longer seen as convenient. And uh, I mean, uh, revisiting this may, uh, again, you look at your options, but the other side is that it's very important for us to uh, regain that convenience aspect because that does deter people from coming to town. Certainly, there are a lot of car parks, and I, I agree with that as well. But the difficulty we have is they're empty because we're, we're not getting the, the amount of people into the city that we used to um, and also that other areas are more convenient than we are and unless we have uh, you know the, the, the equation worked out well that uh, one we're seen as convenient two we have for the facilities and all the infrastructure that people want all the services that they want and we're able to deliver that in a convenient way then the well positioned on street car parking for people who want to use the city in a much more uh, short term casual way that enables them to do that. Where off street parking is only uh, for a longer term, and that's where you save your money 100%. But the difficulty is that if you want to come into the city for 30 minutes, 
that isn't part of anybody's you know, idea because you can do that elsewhere. And I think it's very important that we look at our options because it is about sending a message to the greater community that we want people to come to town. If we find ways to make it easier for them and, and uh, by again reassessing where, where things are at and what can we do, then we're going to be able to get more people into town. Then we can start working on the other forms of transport, which are very critical, that we transition into the next generation of, of uh, you know, public transport or private transport. But it starts first with, the, uh, with the enabling people to think of us as the destination rather than perhaps just an incursion or sort of a difficulty of getting from where they want to get to. Thank you. Members? No? Uh, Councillor Keratis? Some... Just a question before I sum up. Uh, can the CEO just uh, speak uh, briefly about the uh, time constraint issue? Is it really a problem, uh, the report back uh, time, given given that the, the, the actual nature of the motion uh, is, as I said, it's really a report about the report, it's not actually asking for an audit? Yeah, three of them. We talked about this today offline, um, myself and, and Director Mockler, and there is no doubt that there was a fair amount of work that that is required, um, but we could certainly provide an interim report, which, which I think is what you're alluding to tonight. Um, that would be feasible, um, where we can set out, you know, exactly what it is we're looking at and, and the workload implications. So I think we would do it in two stages uh, from tonight, if it was successful tonight. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Uh, well, look, um, Lord Mayor, to sum up, I'm, to be honest, I'm, I'm kind of amazed, but I'm, I'm not surprised. I'm, I'm amazed, but I'm surprised that, that Councillor Sims, uh, you know, that, that the opposition is being headed by Councillor Sims uh, to this. Um, and I've got to say, I'm getting a bit, getting a bit wary and weary about some of the piety uh, coming from parts of this chamber. We are all concerned, Lord Mayor, about the homeless. We're all concerned about the unemployed, and we should all be concerned about the unemployed who become the homeless. Um, guess what, Lord Mayor? You want to help the unemployed? You want to help the unemployed? Tell people outside of this city that they can drive into this city. Tell them that they can drive here, they can come here, and they will find a parking space easily. Tell them to come into this city and to spend their and to spend their money. Because Lord Mayor, because Lord Mayor, that's how you help the unemployed. That's how you help the unemployed. And I think Lord Mayor, and I think Lord Mayor, we should take the opportunity to send a message loud and clear that we are open for business. Thank you. Councillor Kara. <laughs> <laughs> Members. <laughs> oh, that was great. Um, members, if I could ask for your vote, please. Those in favour of the motion. <laughs> Those against. Thank you. That is carried. Uh, uh, councillors, the next is a motion from Councillor Sims. Councillor Sims. I'm starting to wonder whether this motion is redundant, <laughs> given we have the, the great uh, moral challenge of uh, car parking has uh, resolved all ills in our city. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. I move that administration advise council on options available to the City of Adelaide to promote and facilitate the development of social and affordable housing in the city, including the investigation of rate incentives and other initiatives, such as the big issues, Homes for Homes, and that the advice be reported back to council for consideration by no later than 30 June, 2019. Thank you. I ask for a seconder. Councillor Donovan, thank you. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, this motion uh, seeks to address what I consider to be a key challenge for our city, and that is the lack of social housing, the lack of affordable housing. And just so the members are clear on the distinction, uh, Alice Clark from Shelter SA sent around an email, which hopefully you had an opportunity to see. But in that, she noted that social housing is housing that is rented between 25 and 30 per cent of the household income, but it can increase up to market value, whereas affordable housing is housing that is at 80 per cent of market value and to buy or rent. As noted by uh, Council's comments, 
Council strategic plan and residential growth action plan already contains actions and objectives relating to collaborating with key stakeholders to address affordability and diversity and inclusion in our housing supply. So this motion asks administration to look at how these things may be progressed. I don't purport to have all of the answers here in terms of how we deal with this issue. I'm asking for our administration to simply look at what is possible. One option could be for us to look at how we can use our rates as a lever to encourage social and affordable housing in the city. And we've talked a bit about the use of our rates tonight in other contexts. I've mentioned the Homes for Homes initiative, specifically in the initiative, and that's run by the big issue. So Homes for Homes works by encouraging homeowners to make a voluntary tax deductible donation. It's of 0.1% on a sales price and a property that's registered remains in Homes for Homes when it's sold, and that facilitates a 0.1% donation of the sales price by subsequent homeowners. And then all of the funds raised go towards building more social and affordable homes. Now, I know many people on this council will say social housing isn't for business for us. You know, why are we moving into this space? But it's important that we remember that we are a significant stakeholder in the city of Adelaide. And uh, I know I speak for many of us here on this council when I say how concerned we are about the increase of homeless people in our city streets, on our city streets, particularly in extreme heat. We have a moral responsibility to take action and look at how we can help those people. And one way to do that is by building more social housing and also encouraging more um, affordable housing. And my motion is looking at ways we can do that. Now, I should point out, we're doing an important role in linking people up to support services, playing an important role through our collaboration with the Dunstan Foundation. But we can play an even bigger role by encouraging more social housing in our city. After all, uh, I believe that housing is a fundamental human right. Everybody has a right to a roof over their head and a place to call home. And of course, this is a responsibility for state government and federal government who have been woefully inadequate in their action on this, but we also have a role to play and this is simply encouraging council to look at what levers we have. Thank you, Councillor Sins. Councillor Donovan. Lord Mayor, I support this motion and the reason why, as Councillor Sims uh, mentioned, is although typically this is not a council responsibility, I think given the innovation that has occurred already in this field, there is a role for council to play to identify some of those potential levers and the Homes for Homes is an excellent example whereby other states that utilise um, this developer's incentive essentially have had huge success and have already uh, essentially fundraised millions of dollars because it's utilising a basic behaviour change principle which says early commitment, when someone commits to something early, they are more likely to follow through even though they actually have no obligation to do so under something like this. So it's looking at where there might be innovation that we can adopt and there are opportunities coming up. We know if, for example, at 88 O'Connell, if we do end up having some kind of housing there, even if we're looking at innovative approaches like uh, using the homes for homes approach whereby there's a voluntary uh, commitment, early commitment, this has flow on effects for decades to come. So I think there is a role that council can play in looking at innovation within this sphere, while, rather than just looking to what has been tried in the past and perhaps is not within the remit of, of uh, local government. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, does anybody else like to speak to the motion? Councillor Canal, then Councillor Hyde. I did want to put up uh, um, an amendment um, and that uh, uh, it, it comes in that uh, uh, it removes the words promote and and, uh, um, and, uh, and also after development of social and and uh, uh, then after including uh, it puts in uh, access to federal government, state government, private and non-for-profit sector support. Administration of options to so it removes 
to doesn't the sentence isn't complete so, uh, to promote and so just facilitate, facilitate the development of and remove social also taking it social no, yeah yeah they go social and leave it what we have <laughs> is that correct? Remove social yeah, so, uh, and and uh, so hang on, let's, let's, hang on, let's go for that. And the non profit support, and then remove, then after that, investigate. So it should read, right, it is that. Uh, the administrator advises the council on options available to, uh, to the city of Adelaide to facilitate and develop uh, affordable housing in the city, including uh, access to federal government, state government, private and non for profit sector support. And uh, removing the last. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, do I have a seconder for that amendment? Okay, Deputy Lord Mayor. So, uh, Councillor Knight, Inspector. Uh, we've had a, a few discussions around this, this motion. Uh, um, sorry, it. sorry, turn myself on. That's it. Um, and it is uh, fundamentally that uh, the role for um, you know assisting uh, with uh, you know with affordable housing, etc., sits beyond uh, also simply just what the council is doing. And there was the, the wording was used just before about uh, the federal government, state governments, etc., not having done enough in this space. But they're also the ones that, that do have the greatest resources to put into this space. And the city of Adelaide uh, has, uh, first of all, just by its infrastructure, etc., has limited capacity to uh, assist in the social aspect, but in collaboration with uh, all other uh, parties within the, you know, those providing services and also assistance, it can um, to help deliver uh, assistance to people who are uh, you know, homeless, etc. We are going through a time through the Dunstan Foundation's work to where a decreasing number of people are sleeping rough and where now they're getting their assistance through all the support mechanisms that sit around that. So it's not just about a simple housing issue. This is about assisting people with their conditions and very often it's a mental condition besides the fa uh, uh, exacerbating their, 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 their personal issues and therefore uh, they are in circumstances where they need assistance. And I think if we go through those transitions, there are a lot of services here in the city, certainly, and they are a concentration of those. But we do need the greater, the greater services around Adelaide to be able to develop this and develop it affordably. And I think by doing it, it's a slight variation uh, that we are also in, uh, looking at engaging with all other su uh, support mechanisms so that we do have a complete uh, uh, offer that we can help people who are in situations where they need assistance and this way and not uh, uh, trapping us, I suppose, into any one particular uh, mode uh, and in enabling us to then work together with all other parties to deliver uh, you know, better affordable housing. Thank you. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to him? Thank you. Councillors, Councillor uh, Donovan, thank you. And then Councillor Singh. We know from the peak advocacy body for South Australia um, and their CEO, Alice Clark, that in fact social housing is the area that we are most in need of, uh, much more so than affordable housing. So I'm curious why we would remove social housing from the original motion. Um, and um, using her advice, which I I would assume that as a evidence-based council, we would look to the advice of our peak body and our peak representatives. The initial motion spoke to what's most in need, um, which is looking at how we can facilitate an element of it. Of course, of course, I think it was included in the original motion. Of course, that would be in concert with state and federal government, and that is what the uh, Dunstan project is all around. But what, what is possible for us to look at with innovation and including social housing is imperative. We know that that is the one area that is at highest need in our city area. So I would not support the amendment because of the exclusion of social housing. Councillor Sims. 
Yes, I oppose this amendment. It really rips the heart out of the motion, quite literally and metaphorically, because the original motion was designed to look at, as Councillor Donovan has said, the shortage of social housing in our city, with a view to looking at what we can do to facilitate and encourage that. And you know, anybody who spends any time in the city of Adelaide would recognise that homelessness is a huge issue. We have people sleeping on our streets in extreme heat and throughout the entire year. We have a responsibility to help them. All I'm suggesting we do is investigate um, options for how we can facilitate and encourage more social housing and affordable housing in the city of Adelaide, recognising that we're a huge stakeholder here. It's not enough for us to just simply throw up our hands and say, oh, another level of government can deal with that. We're a major stakeholder. We had strategic property um, assets. We've got a role to play. All I'm asking for is an investigation to look at how we do that. And quite frankly, I'm horrified that this council will go down the path of not even looking at options to encourage more social uh, housing here in our city. That would be a real fail of leadership if this amendment gets through tonight. Councillor Moran, then Councillor Kerrin. Yes, look, I think uh, once again, I'm very disappointed when, a, when a, a member of this council puts a thoughtful, well, well um, looked at motion that then is given a report on by the council. And once again, I like it to a game of bowls where, where Helen's bowl has been completely knocked away from the kitty. There's no report for us to have. This is basically become a motion without notice, which is heavily discouraged by the team. Um, but they seem to do it themselves now by actually just cannibalising the motions of, of good, sensible councillors. This agenda has been out for quite some time. I, I, I'm quite sure nobody rang councillor Councillor Sims. Councillor Sims, yes. Councillor Sims to suggest this alteration as nobody had the uh, politeness to ring me to say they were going to cannibalise my motion. These motions are dangerous because they don't have the uh, report from the council. Now, if, if you want to move a motion on mo notice, you put it on notice yourself. You don't just say, hey, I'll just grab, I'll put a cuckoo in the nest and grab somebody else's. It's very poor form. And I, I wouldn't vote for a motion like this ever, whatever it said. Um, but this is, I'm surprised that the Lord Mayor has, it, it's very close to being um, almost a direct negative because the heart of the motion, we already look at affordable housing. That is something that is fairly entrenched in our, in our administrative work and, and our planning. But we don't do a lot of social housing and that is what's screamingly needed at the moment, as you can see with the trouble with the Hutt Street Centre. There's a very, very large building behind the St Vincent's de Paul on Whitmore Square that I think as a previous councillor Priscilla pointed out, that is the sort of thing that we should be looking at. And that's the sort of thing that Hella, that sorry, Robert's motion, <laughs> again, we can start with the greens. Um, <laughs> Robert's, <laughs> Robert's motion was directly pointing to. This has completely changed it and neutered it. It has just become a motion of what we're already doing. And I'm sure that, I, I hope that wasn't the meaning of it. I urge you to pay respects to the person that put the, put the hard work, <laughs> Helen's next, isn't it? I put the hard work in, gave the a respect to the administration to put it in in time and get a report on it. As I said, if the new council members think this is okay way to behave, it is not. Councillor Kerr. Um, I feel I feel a bit duty bound to just address uh, what I think is a imbalance here. There is a sort of moral side that's been put forward, uh, particularly from that side of the chamber, um, in favour of social housing. Um, there is a moral side on the other side of the equation. Um, social housing, let's be clear, is subsidised housing, right? Someone pays for someone else's house. You have to be very careful when you assess these things for their ultimate practical effect on people uh, across the board. It's easy to get swayed by emotional and emotive language and by not looking at, 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 at the hard facts. Um, a subsidy uh, brings in all sorts of problems. Um, one of them is that Adelaide, the Adelaide CBD, is an expensive area. 
uh, there is a high opportunity cost to land uh, within the Adelaide CBD. So one house, one home, one place in the Adelaide CBD that is subsidised by others equates to more than one place uh, that is foregone in other areas that are less expensive. This is something that's got to be addressed, but I don't know that, that it ever will be because one side of the, you know, you're, you're sort of moralising side of, of this argument can draw from our whole ecology of uh, NGOs and a whole ecology of, of organisations whose raison d'etre, the very reason they're there, is to is to keep this thing going. They're not going to apply a, 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 an economic lens to this. Um, so I do think it's important with these sorts of things, this is not an emotive question. This is a question that can be worked out in its final effect on applying economics, and it should be that. Councillor Kouros and then Councillor Abraham Sidon. I just want to mention something that uh, Councillor Donovan said that I agree with, and that is um, that uh, this is not council responsibility. Um, I just believe that adding the um, the amendment where it says, uh, including the federal government, the state government, and the, in there is a, a, actually a very good thing because it is there, it is a state problem. It is not an Adelaide city council problem and I would find it very hard to explain to a ratepayer that we're not um, you know addressing issues that uh, involve them and uh, I don't I think this amendment is actually a good thing because it broadens it out to the government. Oh, Councillor Abraham, I've just got a couple of questions off administration. Um, uh, are there any current rate rebates for, uh, for social housing? Uh, see you. Three will be no. Okay. And um, uh, any um, uh, rate rebates for um, uh, social housing providers or any service providers? See you. Three will be not that I'm aware of. Steve, are you? Um, uh, Lord Mayor, if I could just uh, make a couple of uh, couple of comments on uh, um, on this, um, uh, I believe uh, this issue of, of homelessness is a uh, um, is an issue for for all of us to uh, um, uh, to be uh, to, to, well, to do something about. Um, I've seen both sides of the argument. Uh, if you want to sit here and uh, point to the state government or federal government. I think it's uh, um, uh, we all play a role in, in resolving this issue um, here in the city of Adelaide. I think we play a very important role in uh, facilitating the discussion and making sure that we have all the um, uh, all the service providers around the table and to keep the conversation going. Because I think the first step to resolving any issue is to acknowledge that it exists and for us to talk about it. So I think we're on the right path. Um, but. Um, Again, my uh, my knowledge of uh, um, uh, social and public housing is that there is uh, um, um, a uh, um, it's an initiative that's provided by the uh, federal government, uh, and I think it's called CRA, the Convo for Rental Assistance, and that's something that um, that does help the uh, the social housing uh, providers. So um, um, I'm in support of uh, uh, of this amendment because I would like to see. Uh, exactly what that CRA, the Commonwealth Rental Assistance, from the federal government looks like, exactly what the state government's doing and uh, what the other sectors are doing. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor and then Councillor Hyde. I think I sort of seconded this for the purpose of the debate, but I've got a potential question for the mover, um, if he's prepared to make a change. I think the one thing that I'm hearing on repeat, even from Councillor Kuros and some of the other councillors around the discussion, and I'm going to take into account the deviation from Councillor Sims' motion, the discussion around social is the issue. I think even Councillor Abraham brought this out earlier, where he actually said, look, we would like to know a bit more about what's happening in that space. So if the move is prepared to include um, the following, um, so at the moment, it reads as administration applies council options available to the city whether to facilitate the development of um, options available to the city but like to facilitate the development of. Can we re-enter the word social and affordable? And if the mover is happy to accept that just for the time being, I'll explain why. Uh, if that is okay, if that's okay by you, Councillor Sims, you happy to? No, it's actually oh. Councillor. Um, oh. Oh, sorry, Councillor Knopf. 
Um, yes, yeah, certainly I'll accept that. Just see what you can um, Look, I think what that will do is probably solve what we're trying to achieve. Um, I genuinely think that this is more of a state and federal issue. Um, I really do. And I think every time this council takes leadership on these issues and we do them well, it ends up falling in our bucket. It becomes our responsibility to deliver it every single time, which comes at a huge cost to our ratepayer. And that is a significant amount of money not to take risk into account that we have to carry all along. So I have no problems to look at, and this is something that I want to put to the administration, Let's look at options on how, what role we could play in that space. I mean, that's fine. If it's, if we have a role to play, I'm interested to know. I don't know if we do. I genuinely think we don't, but I'm not prepared to be proven wrong. And I think if this opportunity now with the addition of the federal government, state government, private and non-private sector, brings about collaboration to solve an issue, which Councillor Abraham's had spoke about before, that I'm supportive of that because we've seen through the Dunstan Foundation an opportunity to make real change. And I know the council is committed to that because I recognise that, yes, we have all have to try to solve the homelessness issue in our city and we are all responsible for it in a personal capacity and an elected capacity. Uh, but we went to the uh, we went to the professionals, we went to the people that are engaged in the process that have gone and done a significant amount of work and we've funded them and we've backed them. And it might be that there might be another organisation or model we could look at for social uh, to be able to discuss. I take on board also councillor uh, Kara's comments with regards to one dollar spent in the city could potentially translate to, to three parts of that somewhere else uh, where there's potential saving and it may be that that's what the report will bring about as well, I don't know. Um, so look, given that it's just advice and given that we are asking if we have a role to play in social housing, then let's ask the question, let's have the report come back and I hope that this provides sort of middle ground to be able to get it to a place where we can also Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, I do actually need to ask the Chamber if they um, are happy with this variation. Can I just have a bit of a show of hands? Everybody's happy with the variation? Thank you. Um, I think Councillor Hyde was next. Just a couple of questions. Um, is the administration aware uh, how many social housing residents there are in the city? Not numbers of people, numbers of homes? CEO. I wouldn't imagine you have that no, data. I think we'd need to take that on notice, Councillor. Okay. Um, and I'm guessing the answer to this next question is no, then uh, has the council, does it currently provide any social housing and, and does it partner, crucially, does it partner with anyone to support or provide any social housing? Through the CEO. Claire, can you help us with that at all? Or... Yeah, we'll take on us, but I'm, absolutely we do through our property portfolio, but I haven't got the raw numbers in front of me. Okay, so we do have, we do have. We, we partner in a few. Actually, I might just invite Tom up to yeah. talk about it from a property leasing perspective. Through you, Lord Mayor, uh, at uh, a presentation last week, we actually highlighted that Council in the past has worked with social and affordable housing providers. Um, we were one of the main instigators where we partnered. Um, and certainly there's a lot of entities around the city at the moment that we're facilitating and talking to in regards to social and affordable housing. Thank you. That's that's enough. Thanks. Uh, Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin. I was just trying to see if you'd smoke. No, I haven't smoken. I've been entertained by this discussion. It. Thank you. Um, look, I, I'm disappointed with this amendment because the amendment, much like what happened earlier on, changes the, the meaning of this motion completely. The intention of the movement of the motion is to move responsibility away from council to place the burden of social and affordable housing on the federal government, the state government, the private and not-for-profit sector. Um, th that is the middle ground that, that uh, Councillor Abbey had seeks. That is what everyone has spoken to in this room. It's not our gig. It's not our responsibility, as Councillor Kouros and others said. It is our responsibility, and it's actually in our policy. This is our strategic plan. I don't know whether you guys have seen this. It's our 2016 2020 strategic plan. It is current. It was actually developed by the former council, of which Councillor Abbott was a member, by the way. In fact, I remember him telling us, exhorting us to adopt this and love it. And Lord Mayor, I take it to bed every night. I read it, I keep it under my pillow so that I have this moral compass, this policy guideline and framework. 
Lord Mayor, this document makes it very clear that this is our responsibility. It says clearly to address housing affordability, including diversity of dwelling stock, deliver a range of initiatives, explore opportunities in Council's current property holdings and pursue strategic opportunities to partner in property developments. It's our current policy. It is historic. Mayor. Sorry, Councillor Martin is speaking. Oh, no, that's all right, Lord Mayor, I expect that. Um, Lord Mayor, it is what we have done as a council. We have partnered with organisations and on our own delivered social and affordable housing projects. Um, Ergo is one of the most recent ones. It is an outstanding achievement. And it was that example which led to this being included in our current policy, the one which you all now seek to disengage from. You want to change the policy on the fly. And yet, that policy was created recognising that we had had great success in that area. And in fact, I, I remember Councillor Malani, it was, Natasha, who has mentored uh, Councillor Kouros. She insisted that this be included in our policy and embellished to a greater degree than it actually was. So, councillors, consider the policy. This is just a, a nonsense on the fly. And Councillor Sims's original proposal was consistent with everything that we do. He was speaking about something that is verifiable in our policies and which you tonight have sought to dismantle. Uh, it's just an extraordinary approach to something that has been well considered, which has been after community consultation, which is adopted. That is our policy book. Well, before we go, I'd like to ask a question just relating to the variance to the amendment? Yes, okay? I may, yes. Councillor Sims. Look, I just wanted to clarify, in terms of the additional wording that's been provided, I'm assuming that wouldn't preclude the uh, investigation of some of the things that we can do internally. My reading of what's been proposed is that it's actually broadening it out in terms of saying, let's look at federal government, state government, private not-for-profit, and we can look at some of the issues that I've flagged and discussed with administration in formulating the motion, um, even though it's no longer included, I would assume. I would assume as well. But I'll just ask. Yep, it's true. Well, maybe that would be the approach we would take. Yeah. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify. Sorry, if there's, uh, so uh, Councillor Knoll, I think everybody's spoken now. Councillor Knoll, if you'd like to sum up. Um, again, just a few points, and I suppose if we're, if we're looking at this motion, uh, and I do appreciate the, the, the alteration, uh, but the bottom line is, is that if we already have it in here, then I am speaking to this particular motion and, and uh, 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 making it so that I'm able to, to work with it. And it's also not just about council because we are not, we're not operating alone in this space, nor can we. And I think our ratepayers would uh, also not greatly appreciate, uh, you know, if we were too strongly uh, be involved, but without the community effort. So I think uh, if, we, if we look at this uh, overall, is that our, our objective here is to assist people in need, etc., and do things in a collaborative way. I mean, the Dunson Foundation, as everybody has already said, is a fundamental piece of this, and it's bringing people together. And that was the most important uh, component to actually delivering the good outcomes. And I mean, I've been to a number of their functions, which are brilliant, and and also to better understand how we should all uh, work together to get achieve the outcome. Because we were words about Hutt Street Centre and things like that. These are providing services for people who are not necessarily able to uh, have the, the accommodation, etc., to use these sort of facilities. So we are talking about an entire uh, system by which we can get people who are in need or who have issues that we can assist them to get well or get them into a, um, in a situation where they're able to be uh, returned to the community um, and be uh, you know, productive members and uh, be able to you know, have a, uh, live a happy and productive sort of life. Um, and I think, uh, uh, you know, we, uh, the, the social aspect, etc. I mean, we do need to recognise that the city of Adelaide is not necessarily the cheapest place to do things. And we've talked about rates, we've talked about all sorts of things, and all these impacts uh, uh, have their positive and negative uh, outcomes for all, all uh, ratepayers and residents. So I think it's important. This delivery is not just about uh, us as a, as a single council with uh, you know, our 23 or 24,000, uh, uh, you know, 
residents. This is about us being part of the greater city and the greater state and just delivering the services you know, with all the assistance that we can get. Thank you. If we could now vote on the amendment. Uh, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, I'll go back to the move of Councillor Sims to sum up. I actually just want to uh, thank the Deputy Lord Mayor for his uh, useful variance to the amendment um, and I'm happy with the part that we've found. Uh, I think it's excellent that we're going to be um, raising the issue with the federal government and the state government. Um, it's a good compromise and I, I would thank the councillors for their support. Thank you. If we can then uh, now vote on this as the <laughs> as substantive. <laughs> thank you. I've lost my language. Those in favour? Those against, that is carried. <coughs> Item 15.4, uh, Councillor Donovan, motion on notice for East West Bikeway. So the motion is that Council Administration provide a workshop briefing to councillors by the 31st of March this year, which contains a summary of bikeways projects to date an overview of bikeways as part of Council's integrated transport strategy, opportunities to discuss options for the dedicated east-west bikeway, and a proposed consultation strategy for businesses, residents and visitors to the city, and that we commence the consultation on delivery of the east-west bikeway in April 2019. Uh, thank you. Councillor Sims is seconded. And speak to motion. So, uh, Lord Mayor, just by way of a brief timeline, um, of course, I was not present in the chamber over the, the duration of everything that has come thus far. Uh, but up to this point, so my understanding is back in January 2013, Council first identified the need to improve the, the safety of cyclists through separated bikeways um, and uh, improving cycling infrastructure. In 2015, Council motion then noted in principle state government support for a partnership approach to deliver and specifically noted in that uh, motion the economic benefits in addition to the safety benefits. In 2016, there was a decision to partner with the state government of South Australia to design and fund a dedicated north, south and east, west bikeway. And of course, right now in our strategic plan, the 2016 to 2020 plan includes the delivery of the North, South and the East, West bikeway. So in fact, over that time frame, from 2013 to 2019, there have been 16 different motions, is my understanding, that bring us to this point. And we now have a beautiful East, West bikeway that we can look to, I should say North, South bikeway that we can look to, uh, there were some challenges that came up in moving to the point that we now find ourselves. And I commend those in the chamber who have gone through that process. You yourself, Lord Mayor, Deputy Lord Mayor, uh, Councillors Martin and Councillor uh, Moran, who have worked hard to deliver an excellent outcome. That is not quite yet delivered. And this is the place that we find ourselves stalled because part of the resolution states that we will not commence the consultation on the east-west or movement, further movement on the east-west until finalising the north-south. Now we have the north-south finalised uh, to a certain stage that is not going to proceed because of a hotel along the north-south Adelaideum that we know is not going to be finalised until most likely the end of 2019. There could well be additional uh, barriers that come up there. So there's no point, there's no need at this point in time for us to stall any further. The consultation of the delivery of the East West, which is a commitment that we have made both in our consultation, in our strategic plan, it's a commitment that we've made with collaboration from the state government. We have partnered with them to deliver this East West bikeway. So no longer do we need to stall and this motion simply points to the need to commence the consultation on the delivery. Why is it important that we have a East West bikeway? Well, because a separated bikeway decreases the risk of injury by 90%. So if we are saying that we are trying to create the most livable city for Adelaideans, I would hope that the message from this council chamber is that we value the safety of our cyclists just as much as we value the the safety of our car drivers. Not only this, we know that 
Councillor, do you need just an extra Briefly. moment to wrap up? Briefly. 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 Okay. Chamber, happy? Thank you. So briefly, we know that in addition to um, increasing the safety of our cyclists, if we provide that separated bikeway, we increase usage by more than 200% based on other research from other cities. Now, if we are committed, if we are truly committed to delivering our carbon neutral goals, we know that transport is 35%, 35% of carbon emissions in the city of Adelaide. If we are truly saying we are moving toward that goal, there is no other way other than for us to put a committed effort into improving our infrastructure for cyclists to enable. This allows us to enable more cyclists to use our roads to become that healthy, livable, carbon neutral city that we are aiming for. We know that the city of, of uh, Melbourne is aiming toward 25% of their vehicles being uh, cycling, being cyclists um, over the next four years. We know that the city of Brisbane has injected $100 million over four years for cycling. So we will fall far, far, far behind if we do not move forward on this consultation. So I, I absolutely ask for the support of the Chamber simply to get some consultation happening um, to ensure that we get the delivery of the East West and we go to all of our cyclists our car drivers, go to everyone, all of the users of the city, our businesses, our residents, our visitors, to ask how we can deliver this project in the best possible way, because we know that it is absolutely mandatory that we do it in some way. So let's get all of that feedback and get it underway. Thank you, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Sims. Um, thank you, Gallery, thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And I really want to commend Councillor Donovan for putting this forward. Um, Councillor Donovan is an avid cycler um, and a, a great um, advocate in this space. And so I'm, I'm really pleased to see that this is being kicked off early in this council term. You know, I was on council um, back in 2014 when we were dealing with the Frome Street uh, bikeway saga, as I used to refer to it at that time, because, you know, it was ripped up, it was rolled out. Um, there were a lot of false starts along the way. I'm very happy with um, where we've landed now in terms of Frome Street. But we've now got to move forward and start to actually put the meat on the bones in terms of an integrated uh, cycling network for our city. And I know talking to members of the community that they are really tired of the delays and they're waiting for action on this. You know, I used to joke, there are a few major soap operas in our country. There's uh, Neighbours, Home and Away, the Adelaide Cycling Network. Um, you know, really people are looking for action on this. They don't want to see um, more and more delays. And that's what I like about this motion because it does begin the consultation on delivery of the East-West Bikeway. And as uh, Councillor Donovan has stated, that has already been budgeted for in the past. We've already moved along the road to making that a reality. Now is the time to get that happening. And uh, I know I'm not a cyclist myself, but I'm a, um, a pedestrian. I've got many friends who are in the cycling community. And I know that their concern is around ensuring that they have a safe, separated bikeway that they can use in our city. We shouldn't have a bike path that is some kind of, you know, strip of dental floss that runs down a back street. It's got to be in a prominent area, it's got to be separated, and it's got to be part of a network. And this is moving us along the path to finally getting there. So I'm very supportive of this, and um, I encourage councillors to back this motion so that we can finally put our feet to the pedal and get some action on a bike network here in our city. Members, Councillor Hyde. Lord Mayor, I have an amendment. <laughs> and uh, because this amendment was just drafted while I was sitting here, um, I would also like to add in Just let you fall out first. Councillor, did you wish to make an amendment or ask <coughs> Councillor Donovan to consider it as a variation to her motion? Oh, look, I'm happy to ask her to yeah, consider it as a variation. Yeah. But I, I, I understood, I understood that you can't. Sorry, if I just ask, yes, if Councillor Donovan is happy to take it as a variation. 
Okay. Um, am I able to speak to it in any case? Not yet. I just have to see if Councillor Donovan uh, would like uh, to. I would also. It. Sorry, I, I would like to add in as well. Sorry, I think 1.5 needs to become two separate, separate part. And under 1.4, if you could please add in another 1.5, reading a proposed consultation strategy for businesses, property owners, residents, and visitors to the city, comma, that may be used as a framework for future cycling infrastructure works. So, Councillor Donovan, if you are happy to add that to your motion as a I variation. I would be happy so long as the, uh, the final point is not omitted, which is that we commence the consultation. So I'd be happy to include those points and then, main, then maintain the final point. So make uh, what was to make that, yeah, make that, commence the consultation, make that dot point three, I'd be happy then to Include the next no, the, the, the whole point is that I don't want to commence consultation without seeing what we're consulting on first. So that makes that an amendment rather than a variation to the motion, so I'll need a seconder for that. Councillor Kerrin. Okay, we tried to make it work. But um, uh, look, ultimately, what I will say is, um, and I've said it many times before in this chamber, and I've said it to cyclists who contact me, and I've said it to cyclists that I cycle with as well, um, that the biggest single disservice that was done to cycling infrastructure in this city was when Stephen Yarwood rushed into, without doing the proper groundwork, rushed into the north-south corridor. And, Hyde, to address the chair. And, and through you, Chair. Um, and we need to remember that, that Adelaide is, is sometimes a place that doesn't appreciate new things as much as perhaps it should. Um, uh, and, and because it was approached in the wrong way, because the groundwork was not done properly, we in all likelihood actually set back cycling infrastructure many, many years. That's, that's, and so, and so what, what this amended motion achieves is if we can look at if Sorry, we can if, if you uh, gallery I please ask you to keep your comments to yourself otherwise we'll ask you to leave the gallery what this what this achieves is an opportunity for this new council to get uh, to get the framework and the approach to improving and building cycling infrastructure in this city right from the get-go and I think if we get that right from the beginning what we'll actually be able to see is is that we will be able to gain the confidence of the businesses, the property owners, the visitors to the city, all the stakeholders who we need to have confidence in our ability to roll out uh, safe cycling infrastructure. We know what safe cycling infrastructure looks like. We know as a council what it looks like, but we need to take the public on this journey with us. And that includes those that drive around, that includes those that use all the other modes of transport in the city. So um, what this does is, is allows this council uh, to, to, to enter into that realm in a considered way without rushing into it. Um, and, and in doing so, as, as we've said here, proposed consultation strategy um, to use for future cycling infrastructure works. What I want to get out of this is a rinse and repeat consultation model that we can workshop, that we know is effective, so that not just for the east-west, but when we look at any piece of, of cycling infrastructure in this city, we can say, look, we've done this, uh, we know that this works, this is the framework we will take um, when we're looking to build, rebuild cycling infrastructure in the city. Because I can tell you what doesn't work, and that's how the North-South was approached um, in the beginning, and, and it took a, 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 a new council and a new Lord Mayor four years to clean up that mess, and it's only just being done now. So. I would appreciate uh, a more considered approach approved by the Chamber uh, with this amendment. Also, furthermore, um, cycling infrastructure is not cheap, uh, 
and and putting this on the capital city committee means that we are we are able to to canvas state government support for building this infrastructure. So um, again, you know, we, we get all lathered up about the east west, and I understand it. Um, and as we can see from all the emails that we've all received, there are hundreds for and hundreds against, and and it's like a red rag to a bull. That proves that we haven't got this right in the first instance. Thank you, Councillor Kerr, and then Councillor Sims. No, is that my right, Lord Mayor? Councillor Sims. Look, I can't support this amendment. I actually see this as being a poison pill amendment because there are aspects in there that I actually quite like. You know, consider the opportunities through the tram upgrade to look at how we can deal with uh, cycling infrastructure. I have no issue with raising the matter um, at the Capital City Committee. Indeed, I think that's probably quite a, a good idea. But the removal of the commencement of the consultation on delivery of East West is really the sting in the tail here. Because I'm concerned that we've been down this road many times before. And the community has been involved in discussions around East West. We've been through the process of developing and scaping, scoping out the network. Now is the time to actually start consulting on this specific phase. Um, and you know, I think the criticism of um, Lord, former Lord Mayor Yarwood um, is unfair. He's not here to defend himself. But we know from the experience uh, around um, the country and indeed around the world that whenever you introduce new infrastructure and cycling infrastructure, there is an element of resistance as people adjust to a new mode of transport. That's well documented. And of course, we experience that here in Adelaide. But I don't think we should be uh, criticising somebody for um, what was in effect quite an innovative separated bikeway, one that has been improved in, in recent years. I accept that. But look, I can't support this amendment because I see it as being more backpedalling from the council, more backpedalling, more analysis paralysis, when really what we should be doing is moving on to consultation on East West and making that happen and ending the delays. Members. Is there any more discussion from the floor? Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, at the risk of being repetitive, uh, this is attempting to rewrite what is the council policy. Again, it is that we complete a north-south bikeway and that we complete an east-west bikeway. That's our policy. That's what's been agreed. That's what's been the public consultation. Councillor uh, uh, Donovan's motion was a simple strategy to address the second half of our strategic plan promise to deliver an east-west east bikeway. And as commendable as it is to be talking about uh, yet another separated north-south bikeway and taking this to the capital city, which I know meets every three months, this is a matter that has already been resolved in negotiations with the state government. We actually signed a deal with the state government I remember the night that Martin Hazy came to council to say, I've done it, I've signed the deal, the government has agreed to come into the, uh, the east-west north-south bikeway and to fund us. And there was a signing ceremony. He signed the document, he signed it, and we now have an arrangement with the state government. In fact, the money is unspent. It's sitting in the state government coffers, or have we got it? We've got it. Oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah, I have to buy interest account too. And one that's divested of fossil fuels, cuts and um, So the, this, is, this is already in progress and it was delayed because there was a hiccup last year. Councillor Donovan's motion puts it back on track. Now, I'm happy for there to be a process whereby we talk to Capital City Committee about where to next after We've completed our obligations to our policy, to the state government and our stakeholders to finish the east-west bikeway. Really, this is about doing nothing. This amendment is about doing nothing. And the last thing this council needs is to be a do-nothing council. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I just want to be clear. Uh, the transport strategy around bikeways for the city of Adelaide, be it separated, will be delivered. There is no question about that. Where? The east-west commitment, uh, the south-north commitment, which has been a challenging one. I know I've been involved from the process from the get-go, from 2010, where Councillor Moran was in the room, as the only councillor that was in the room, and the Lord Mayor then, Sandy Vashore, was in the GM position. 
we have seen this unpack. We have seen the community frustration as a result of the process. And the reason there was a halt on the extension at the time called Mayor of the East West was mainly focused on completing uh, the current south north to deliver on an outcome at which we can point at. Through that process, we've gone through a conversion mechanism with landowners, as we've seen. We've known property owners on that stretch that were throwing bricks at council with regards to what was developed prior to the latest iteration. That language has changed. We have seen that. That has occurred. And that's taken time to take people on that journey. They happen to be ratepayers, and we have to listen to ratepayers. That's how it works. The issue we've got at the time is now we've got a hotel and the PECT extension was meant to take us all the way to the Johns River. So council has three options as I see it at the moment. The funding is there and the funding at the moment is sitting just under 6 million from what I understand that's left over. If I can just get that clarification. It's through the CEO. It's through you, Lord Mayor. Um, maybe Beth, you can just clarify. I'm sorry, thank you. Uh, thank you, through, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, there is some funding left from North South, which I would have to double check on the numbers. Sure. Is around about 1.5 million we still have from memory. Yep. And then we do progress claim payments from the state. So in response to Councillor Martin's comment earlier, we don't yet have that money, yep. but we claim from the state on sections that are 50-50. And what's the total amount of money we can claim up to from the state government? Uh, the total is $12 million. Yeah, what have we claimed so far? What's left? Uh, the 1.5-ish, but I'd have to double check that in North-South yep. and the entirety of East-West and um, uh, some what's, members. What's the number? So, At least six million left. For yep. so that, that's million, the initial question I There's asked. another million that I was coming sure. to that um, there was an agreement at the time of the signing between the then Lord Mayor and the then Minister that a million dollars, so 5.5 okay. 5 plus 5.5 plus 1, uh, the million dollars would be for exploring a point-to-point -point bike share. Oh, so we did the fees yep. but that funding is still sitting there. Thank you very much. So we have Thank six you. million roughly left in the kitty to deliver an outcome around an infrastructure project. Uh, we have three choices that I see, and this is why I welcome a workshop discussion. We can either stick to the extension of the current South North as a council and complete that all the way to the Torrance. The money's allocated for it, but we'll use the money for a separated bikeway infrastructure. That's option one. Option two, council rolls with the East-West discussion. That is, from what I understand, is close to 20 million. So we're gonna have we're gonna have to have some discussion on how we're gonna get that funded. So we don't have the money. So when are we going to have that chat? Is that your uh, That's my assumption, yes. But if we go full east-west, let's get an idea of what we're talking money-wise. Thank you. Through you, Lord Mayor, thank you. Um, an east-west of the standard of the Frome Street section yep. of North South Bikeway yep. would be in the vicinity of 16 to 20 million. Excellent, thank you we, very much for We that. need to detail that design of and course. cost it. That's a very high level estimate. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. So in essence, we don't have the money, but we're planning to take the Ferrari for a ride before we can even buy it. And the problem we've got, as I said, are three things. Either use the money to extend to the Torrance, which is a promise we'll deliver on. East-West, which requires additional funding, which is this capital city committee discussion, which we need to have with the Premier, that talks about biking infrastructure. And there's a third option that just came up, just like Councillor Martin mentioned before, situations change with a Rymel kiosk where there's a Quinton Canahan Park potentially happening there. We have a current King William extension on the tram, which I see a once in a lifetime opportunity for a separated bikeway on that. Council may also want to consider to speak to the state government to shift the funding from east-west towards King William to have a separated bikeway to maximise the opportunity there on the return of investment without having to incur significant cost of council. All those three decisions can be taken to council committee, made a decision on, dis discussed with the government, and if you take into account Smart Move, Smart Move 2.0 discussion, which is overdue to renew, we need to have a transport strategy for the city. If I can get an extension, Lord Mayor, because I've had my time shoot up. I'll be quick. The Smart Move 2.0 around transport infrastructure uh, will provide a clear map for the city's infrastructure needs around traffic management, so back to Councillor Kiro's concerns around car access and mobility. Where are the bus corridors? Where are the tram corridors? Where is the future mobility solutions? 
with regards to Smart Move 2.0, be it scooters, be it other things that we may consider as a city, including separated bikeways of how they're pegged over a 10-year plan with a clear budget from council and the state government on how we can deliver that. So we don't need to have that chat over and over and over again where we're talking about ad hoc projects. We cannot deliver a full-scale transport strategy on bikes for the city of Adelaide without the support of the state government, full stop. Full stop. We can roll the first 25% on east-west. That's all we can do. Nothing else. That's the money we have. Rubbish. I'm just going to ignore that. I'm not going to play the man. I'm, I'm trying to not play the man. It's very difficult, but I'm not trying not to do that. Thank you, Deputy. Um, you have one minute left. Thank you, Lord Mayor. So we can only roll out 25% of that, given the current numbers we've seen. So these are the three options as I see them, but the bigger piece of the discussion here is what is the state government's plan around transport and traffic management in the city? We need to know. We've had the previous government that just rolled out out of the blue on North Terrace, the tram extension. We're grateful for that, but that has impact on traffic in the city and moved cars around. We have currently a street, Curry Street, Grenfell Street, falling apart under the buses that are moving around. We need to have a serious chat at Capital City Committee with the government about what is their 10-year long-term financial plan to fund strategic uh, transport outcomes for the City of Adelaide. And bikes will be one of them. So I'd ask members to support this amendment. Thank you. I'm just going to ask the CEO to comment. Through you, Lord Mayor. Look, I know that there are very different opinions around the table. There's a bit of a confusion about the history of this project, and it's obvious because there are a number of new council members. It's unfortunate you've not had the benefit of being able to sit around the table and really unpack and learn all about the history of where we've got to. Um, without wanting to enter the debate at all, I think it's a valid proposition to just simply defer this matter to a workshop to have that conversation. Um, to go further than that is going to be problematic because there are a number of aspects that I think you need to be fully informed of. So if I could possibly urge you to consider deferring to a workshop and we will work you through it in detail. Councillor Moran, sorry. Uh, yes, but really it's, it's very confusing and I was here. Um, so I'm happy to move deferral to a workshop at a, um, uh, in not too distant future. So, members, I'm being advised that we need to uh, vote on the amendment first and then if the amendment's lost we then can actually uh, defer it, do a motion to defer it to a workshop. But I have to go through the, um, the procedure first. Um, if I could just say, because I, I do note and thank uh, the members of the public that have joined us tonight for this discussion. Um, this council is very committed to doing bikeways through the city. We do see it as part of an integrated transport solution. So it's not it's not a discussion around you know one versus the other. And and I have continuously as a councillor and as a deputy lord mayor and now as mayor, I do support the bikeways and separated bikeways. And I do think that we need to have one further discussion so we can actually understand the costings, the routes, the um, consultation strategy, and actually the consideration of some opportunities that have just landed for us. Uh, not uh, taking away from Councillor Donovan, because I do support your um, wish to actually bring this through. Um, and so if I can actually ask councillors, if there's anyone else that would like to speak to the amendment, and then we'll put it to the vote. Lord Mayor, can I ask a question? You may ask a question, uh, Councillor Moran. Would this be solved by the move, move of the amendment, withdrawing that amendment to allow us to move straight to a deferral? Uh, governance is saying yes. If that's the uh, suggested Councilor outcome, Hine? why would you be belligerent and not do that? Through you, Lord Mayor, I think this is a better motion. And I think it's in line with the advice from administration and yourself. So if, are there any other speakers on the amendment before we go to the vote? 
No, in that case, councillors, I ask you to vote on the amendment before you. Oh, no, sorry, I'll ask Councillor Hyde, my apologies, to sum up. Um, just briefly, I mean, the, the last few comments that we got were exactly what I'm getting at. We shouldn't be rushing into a consultation without even knowing what we're saying we're going to consult on in May. And that doesn't necessarily mean that the consultation is going to be far off. It just means that this council is committed to getting this done right so that we can have a rinse and repeat process whenever we want to go and build a separated bike path. It's certainly not about doing nothing, which is what was suggested by um, by Councillor Martin, who has a motion about the historical benefits of bells in the building or something like that, uh, which is ironic. Well, but Councillor Hyde, it, thank you. Stick to the motion you're talking but, about. But what I would say, what I would say is this is actually a motion about doing more. This is a motion about doing more than just the east-west. This is a motion about rolling out separated bike paths wherever appropriate across the entirety of the city and, uh, and having that conversation with the state government, because as we've heard, 16 to 20 mil for one, is certainly not, we, we certainly don't have the financial capacity to do this by ourselves. So I'll just leave it there. Thank you. Members, I'll ask you to vote. Those in favour of the amendment? Those against? That is carried. That becomes a substantive. Would any sure. division call? Councillors, a division has been called on the amendment. Those in favour of the amendment, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Abraham today, the Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kerr, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Kuros, and Councillor Knoll. That now becomes a substantive. Members, if there is any further discussion, Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, Lord Mayor, I, I just can't believe that we've gone down the path where we had a clear direction to an east-west bikeway and a consultation, which is part of our policy to a new process that involves a whole discussion about smart moves, including buses, bus lanes, pedestrians, cars. It has opened the whole thing again. And frankly, if I were a ratepayer of the city of Adelaide, I'd be throwing up my hands and saying, what a bunch of incompetence. We had, we had the choice before us. The waters have been muddied again by yet another amendment to a motion and frankly, it is frustrating. Councillor Sims. Yeah, I must say, I, I share Councillor Martin's frustration, particularly when we were offered as an alternative um, a workshop uh, yes. to at least sorry, discuss a proposal. Sorry, I've been told that you've spoken already. My apologies. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, I would, even though you can't see it on the board, uh, on the screen, uh, I will just advise that the, it does say that we will provide a workshop briefing to councillors by the 31st of March. Um, so there is still a workshop briefing coming to councillors in the next few weeks. Uh, would anybody else like to speak to the, the amendment, which is now the substantive? If not, I go back to councillor Donovan to sum up. Well, this is a thoroughly disappointing outcome and whilst there are many elements of the new motion that I would absolutely get behind and um, and certainly would have been happy to see included in the initial motion, I would dread to think if Councillor Hyde thinks that six years is rushing to an outcome. So if we are rushing to an outcome in a six year process, then who knows how long it's going to take before we actually get an east-west delivery. Of course, we are going to be looking at the overall network and at the, the integrated transport plan that has already been noted by the administration that it will be coming to us in the next budget. So it's pointless to include that in this proposal. That's already happening. We don't need any additional information to be looking to that. This motion was pointing to getting some action and some outcomes for a substantial portion of our city transport users. And this is a thoroughly disappointing outcome to see once again, we're gonna delay it more than six years. How absolutely ridiculous 
that that is the point that we come to in this council. And I would hope that we move forward at a little bit more pace to get a very simple outcome that is already funded, that we have the commitment from the state government to deliver, and that there is it's absolute rubbish that we need to spend 16 to $20 million on every single separated bikeway. What we know is that is indicative of the current method that has been applied to Frome. It's beautiful, lovely. There's no way that that level is gonna be applied across the city. We know that to be true. Every single street will need a different outcome. So let's, let's not propose and put out that burpee that it's gonna cost $20 million to achieve every single separated bikeway that we look at. Every street will be looked at separately. And we have already done a lot of that work. We've got six years of analysis from our administration, who none, no one in this room is, no, is an urban planner or a transport planner. We have a team of people who have already delivered all of the advice that we need to, to get this outcome. So what a ridiculous point that we're now delaying this even further than the six years that it has taken to get to this point. Thoroughly disappointing. Yeah. Thank you. I remind the people in the gallery, please, if we love you joining us, but if you can act, please keep your comments to yourself and uh, we will now continue. We will go to the vote. So those in favour, those against, that is carried. Councillors, the division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Apprehensive, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Ho, Councillor Carer, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Knoll. Thank you, members. We now go to item 5.5. Councillor Martin. Um, Lord, Lord Mayor, look, um, I fear having seen every other motion amended this evening that this might be amended in a way that I can't even imagine. So I'm going to withdraw this until an occasion when it probably won't be opposed as strong. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. Uh, we go to. I'm actually at the police Sorry, sorry, the Councillor. Sadly, sadly, the Councillor has withdrawn item 15.5. So we will move on, Councillors, to item 15.6. Oh, Excuse me, Councillor Kuros, could we please continue with the meeting? We are now at item 15.6. Look, I can't, I can't be sure. Uh, I know they say they agreed to support this, but one never knows what they'll do with this one. So I'm going to withdraw this one as well, and I'll bring it forward on another day when there's hopefully less likelihood of the team of me. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Martin. Are there any motions without notice? Yes, Lord Mayor. Sorry, Councillor Hyde. Assuming it's not going to upset Councillor Martin too much, I'd like to move that Council requests administration prepare a report by the end of March on the possibility of commissioning a project to research and document the architectural and social history of the City of Adelaide's Albert Tower Wells together with an estimate of any associated costs. Can, can I admit that? <laughs> um, Councillor... <laughs> I can... <laughs> I'm going, not going to accept that, Councillor Hyde. I will actually wait because uh, Councillor Martin has put this motion forward and has also said he's going to postpone it to the next meeting. That's a great shame. I was looking forward to speaking on it. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Um, we will now go to item 17, which is exclusion to, of the public for the following reports of the committee. Um, and I will need a... I would need a uh, mover for 
2.1.1, which is recommendation one, the strategic property matter. If I can have a mover and a seconder, please. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today, and a seconder, Councillor Knoll. Um, did anyone wish to speak on that? If not, can we go to the vote? Thank you. All in favour? Those against? That's carried. Uh, recommendation two, which is strate strategic property matter. If I could have a mover and a seconder. Councillor Abraham today. Uh, Councillor Sims. Any discussion? If not, can I go to the. Sorry, Councillor Mark. Escape, Mark Lord um, two is, isn't it? Yes. Why, why is this in confidence? Sorry, uh, see, so could you answer that? It's really a little bit, Beth. It's because there is some financial information in there, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's through, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, it was in confidence for committee because of the um, commercial nature of it. Um, however, I'd suggest now that the announcement has been made um, that it could actually be considered out of confidence. We should that we, we should have picked that one up, Councillor. Mm. All right, let's let's I do it out of confidence. Yeah, yeah. I think the yeah. agenda had already been done, so yeah, we can take that's that correct. out of confidence, um, uh, which I will do first. Uh, I have 18.1.2 which is the um, advice of the audit committee. Uh, if I could have a mover and a seconder, please. No, we're not, we're not in confidence yet. Sorry, De Deputy Lord Mayor and a seconder, thank you. Councillor Sims, uh, if there's no discussion, could I have um, a vote, please, those in favour, those against. That is carried, and I have um, an item 18.1.3, which I referred to earlier in my presiding members report, which is a funding offer that I wish to discuss with members. Um, if I could have a move for that to be in confidence, please. Uh, thank, thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, seconder, Council Apprehensive. Ms Henderson, if you do not stop speaking from the gallery, I will ask you to leave the chambers. Thank you. Counts councillors, I will adjourn the meeting if, council if um, Ms Henderson does not stop speaking. Uh, sorry, members, I have Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Abraham today. Could I actually uh, have a vote on that? Those in favour? Those against, that's carried. Um, we will deal with item 18.1.1, the uh, SCAD part, strategic property matter, after, after we've finished in confidence. Uh, so we'll now go into confidence. So thank you, those members of the gallery that uh, um, are still left, if they could please leave so we could go into confidence. Thank you.
was 18, oh, lost it, 18.1. Thank you. 18.1.1 no, recommendation two, which is a property, strategic property matter of the skate park. Um, if I could have a move, please. Thank you, Councillor Martin, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to it? No. Councillor Moran? No. Uh, Councillors? No, if not, if I could ask you to sum up, please, Councillor Martin. Uh, Councillors to vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, members, that completes our business for the evening. Thank you. There are no other items. I declare the meeting closed.